morning guys thank you for being here we're going after some spiders and some wolves uh, we had some lean wolf flanks late last night but i think i vendored all of our wolf flanks so we have zero out of ten lean wolf flanks mr chewy otukin dan good morning thank you guys for being here Curry Muncher, welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for being here. It's okay. We're still alive, so even if you didn't catch up on the VODs, you, you didn't miss much. Uh, we were on pretty late last night, and I was uh, super tired by the end of it. But surprisingly, we're still alive. Weston, Jackie, hello. Morning, guys. Tukin, absolutely, this character is going really well. You know, people have said that playing the Paladin on, on Hardcore is kind of like playing Hardcore on Easy Mode. And I think it is like a, like a medium setting, you know. I don't think anything in Hardcore could necessarily make it easy. But I, I would agree that having the bubbles and having Lay on Hands, having self heals, we're about to start going into a talent that's going to let us run away faster. So yeah, the Paladin has been a lifesaver. And... The Paladin has allowed me to learn how to stream and play the game, which has been a little bit of a, of a process. And we've almost gotten killed a couple of times. We, we've had some pretty close calls. Mr. Chewy wants to know if I watch any sports. I, I, me and my wife, we religiously watch like every football game we can during football season. Yeah, we, we lived in Kansas City for a long time and got into watching the Chiefs, so... We're still big Chiefs fans, and we're Lions fans too, but uh, primarily Chiefs fans, Bills fans. I love the Bills. I have to vendor. I don't, I don't know why I ran out of town so eagerly. Let, let's run back. Blood Moon, good morning. Hello. Al, Welcome. Oh, Tukin, yeah, the 7 HP, when the only reason we lived through that 7 HP is because there was a priest nearby that shot us a really clutch heal. Otherwise, we would have died. I'm, I'm pretty sure we took a hit after he healed us. And then I still couldn't fathom even watching the replay. There was another character that was really low on health, and I think they died. Yeah, because I, I targeted someone else who wasn't the priest, who wasn't ourselves, who was really low on HP also, and then they were gone. Blood Moon, I, I don't watch college football. I never got into it, and I, like part of me thinks maybe it's because like they're younger kids, and it's a really physically punishing sport as it is. And like, so I, I have some problems with how like finish, f physically punishing and demanding the sport is on the players, and like the injuries that can happen. And I, I enjoy the sport regardless of those things that I feel, but it's hard for me to watch college kids banging themselves up. You know what I mean? Because I kind of understand some of the long-term things that happen with even like low-grade concussions that just build up over time, and it just like it worries me too much when I watch the kids play. And even saying that, I know a lot of the players in the NFL are super young, and that uh, well is always a big worry. For the alliance, what I really love was like the flag football that they did uh, during uh, I forget when they did that at the end of the season. It was like the Pro Bowl. They did the flag football instead. It was like a half field and it had like pretty neat rules. I, I like I like the flag football because no one was ever going to get hurt. Daniel, yeah, I don't know much about rugby except that it is a very physically demanding sport. I know like you're hitting each other and you're not wearing a lot of pads, <laughs> so. How are yeah, you? for sure. See you later. The biggest thing that's dangerous in football is sometimes like the speed and velocity at which you take a hit. 
So it's not just like being thrown down sometimes, but like just the speed, velocity, and just the random angle that you can take a helmet to helmet hit. It, that's the trouble. Nero, I have a very deep voice. Can I tell you why? I don't know. I'd probably have to be a geneticist or something to kind of explain. There's probably physical factors that have gone into it. I, I was a classroom facilitator, so I had to learn how to project my voice and modulate it and do all kinds of stuff with it to keep classes interesting. And over time, it probably changed like how I talk because when I first learned to facilitate, I talked really, really fast. You couldn't understand much of what I said. But can I tell you why I got here? No, not really. Why does your voice sound like your voice, man? That's my question to you. Because I don't know if you know this, but it's weird. Uh, they did well on the camping trip, yeah? Well, they're sleepy today. Everyone, everyone's tired. They did as well as can be expected, I think. Tent, ca tent camping is always really, really challenging. You need something? Even under the best circumstances, it never feels like you can get a really good night's sleep tent camping. Unless it's like in a colder season, maybe. In the summer, it's rough. Uh, let's see, we don't need that. Yeah, Blood Moon, I, I can't imagine if I, I don't know if I, I would let my kid play contact football. I've thought about it. I think I would have him play flag football first and then kind of go from there. It would be so, it would be, yeah, it's just too scary. So many things can happen anyway, like outside of like being in a position where you know you're going to get hit. And then it's like sometimes I don't worry about the individual hits, but I worry about the culmination of all the hits you take over time, especially if you start off as like a player really young in life. Have a good one. Paul, thanks for being here. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It's morning here. Well, it's afternoon now. It's, it feels like morning because I slept in. I slept in after streaming so late. It was uh, it was a challenge to get to sleep. But that's it was totally worth it, though. Nero Knight wants to know how old I am. I will be 40 years old in January of 2024. But I feel like a 12-year-old most of the time. And I kind of live my life like one. So, yes, Toby, this is what I look like. It's the face I have been stuck with, and uh, if you're here now, you're stuck with it while you're here. So, I do apologize for that. Curry Muncher wants to know if I ever tried EVE Online. Uh, I haven't tried EVE Online, and the honest reason is that I don't think I'm smart enough to play EVE Online. I, I, feel, I feel like there's a lot of like very complicated systems that are in EVE Online, and correct me if I'm wrong. And I don't think I have the gaming intellect to succeed at that game, as interesting as it might be. And there are probably other deficits in me that would also stop me from enjoying it. Beta Jones, yeah, we've had the face cam on for a couple of days, a few days. Blood Moon, I appreciate that. That's sweet of you. It's only because I'm covering up most of my face most of the time. Votes asked if I tried hammock camping. No, but we had a hammock for a little bit. One that like zipped up and I, I thought that'd be pretty cool. It would probably be a lot better than uh, than tent camping, but a lot of what bothers me about camping is like we often try to go in the summer when it's hot. 
And it just doesn't cool down enough. I'm never comfortable in the tent. It's like, you know, it's moist in Michigan. It gets humid. And a lot of times at night in the summer, the humidity doesn't go away. I, I think if I tried camping of any sort in like a colder season, I would probably enjoy it much more. Yeah, Paul, we're almost 26. I, I think we were almost level 27 when I got the troll mage killed over in Hillsbrad. So we are kind of approaching like the threshold of the highest level hardcore character that I've had. So that's pretty exciting. The Waller, thank you, man. I'm, I'm glad you've been enjoying the streams. I, I've really been loving them. So I'm happy to hear when people are enjoying them. Mark Van Warmer asked if I had a couple of the drinks last night. I, I had juice derived from grapes and water, so I did drink fluids, yes. Jade, thanks for stopping by, man. I hope you have a good lunch and a good rest of your day. And Mark, to be quite clear, even if I had a couple of the drinks you were insinuating, I don't know what YouTube's policies are, so I, I would never confirm. Even if that were the case. Hambo, you thought WoW was dead? Dude, it thought you were dead, and it's really happy to hear that you're not. So, welcome to the stream, man. I'm gonna let them know you're still hanging in there. Thanks for being here, brother. The Waller, are you asking when I started streaming today, or when I started streaming in my life? Uh, for today, we came on like 15 minutes ago. Uh, for my life three or four days ago, but I've been putting up content on YouTube for over four years. Five years now, I think. Adrian, we just started 15 minutes ago. You haven't missed anything. Welcome, man. Whitney, hello. Good morning. Thanks for being here. I have a disease that I think I can just rinse clean. Yep, there we go. I don't think I have to be killing these guys over here. I think we can eventually pair this up with a different quest over in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should head that way. Curry, much of you think that once LFG gets put into the game, you think the community will explode? Yeah, the Wrath community might uh, might surge back after that. I, I don't know how many people that pulls away from like hardcore. I I'm lucky enough that I'll be able to split some of my time, so like it won't be have to pull me away. But I wonder for people who play uh, like a lot of classic era now and a lot of hardcore, if like the LFG tool will be enough to pull them back to enjoying some stuff in Wrath of the Lich King, because that's just like end game stuff really for people who want to grind catch up gear. And grinding catch-up gear, for most people, that's going to be something you only do for a little bit. And then you're either going to be raiding with people, or you're going to be falling out of the game again, you know? Mosat, thank you for being here. Yeah, live stream. We've been live streaming for a few days. Thanks for being here. Elias, no, they, they haven't confirmed it. They haven't even so much as talked about it. The last thing we heard, they were like, no, we're not putting that in. And then they like have shamelessly stuck to their guns despite the community kind of basically just asking for it at this point. Like we're ready just to have it. But they're, they're not going to put it in until the Ice Crown patch. And they're going to stand on the fact that like originally, I don't think it was put in the game until the Ice Crown patch. 
which is kind of bullshit because we for the rest of the functionality of wrath we launched with that patch intact so we launched basically with all the systems on the patch that would have given us lfd except lfd was not in the game also i remember there being like in-game quest tracking in wrath of the lich king that that was where they had put in like their in-game objective tracker for the minimap and the map and stuff and they never really talked about it but they didn't put it in at launch and they haven't talked about if they're going to put it in later on. And like, everybody uses Questy anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much, but I, I thought that was kind of weird that they, they, A, they didn't put it into the game, and then B, they never talked about it after that. Valus95 asks, what made me decide to level a Paleon Hardcore Classic as, to, as opposed to other classes? Valus, man, we got every other class killed. We've gotten a paladin killed before, but I've gotten every single class killed at least once. And this is our second paladin, so we're kind of like looping back around, you know? Let's get out of here and let's let's head out. Let's check out... Hmm. Let's go to the to the west here. We'll try to get some lean wolf flags. We will head over to the cemetery and kind of check things out over that way. And we need a bunch of spider venom also. Tactical warrior. Hey man, yeah. We might ding on the next kill. Very, very likely. I, I can't see like anything down here between the purple and the gray, so... It seems like that's gonna happen. And we kind of checked out the level 26 skills. I don't think we really need to rush back to get any of them. I think we're good to just stay out for a little while, and then next time we happen to be in town, we'll grab them, or maybe at level 28 if we're still out doing stuff. Elias, you've met a few people in Wrath who just, they don't have add-ons, they don't have questy, and they struggle with the questing. Yeah, the thing is... I feel like a lot of the quests in Wrath of the Lich King were written with the idea that people would have the quest help. So, unlike most of the vanilla quests and BC quests that are very explicit in giving you, like, exact directions, I don't know if all of the Wrath quests do that. Because I feel like they kind of, like, knew about the, uh, the quest tracking was going to be in the game or, had, or was in the game already. So, I, I just don't know if the Wrath quests have the same amount of, like, physical direction as, as far as telling you where to go in the world to find the objectives as, like, BC and vanilla did. So, yeah, I can see how people would struggle. If they don't have any in-game quest help and they don't, uh, they're new to the game and they don't know about add-ons, it probably could be a struggle for most new players. Yeah, stitches. We're you know we're gonna probably want to stay off the road. That's a, that's a good point. I I do need to be reminded of stitches because it's like I'll remember stitches when he's bearing down on us, coming up from behind us. You know, because my camera's too close and I didn't see him. So yeah, maybe I ought to just kind of stay off the road. Opigards, hello. Thomas, I'm glad you're enjoying the streams. Thanks for being here. I'm really enjoying them too, it's been a blast. Oh, we did ding. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're going to go into Pursuit of Justice. <clears throat> this is going to increase our movement speed, so not only will it help with travel, but we will be able to run away faster. And running away is something we do a lot. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's what we do. Sakura, I appreciate that. Thank you guys for being here. There's Stitches. Okay, we are out. At least the view distance let me see him before he could aggro us. Yeah, let's let's be way out of here. Mm. 
my weapon is this massive battle axe of stamina 42 to 64 damage 16.1 dps 8 stamina that's not a bad idea will that just stay on him like for eternity until i until i change it Paul Webster, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm glad you're liking the streams. Oh, don't be shy and go say hi to Stitches. Nah, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Jason, calling me out for already being back on the road? Yeah, I'm back on the road, but only because Stitches passed us. So I think we're. I, I don't think they spawn like multiple Stitches, do they? Like, I'm not gonna run into another one pathing this way right now. Like, I'm good to be here for, for the moment, I think. That could turn out to be wrong, but I, I think we're okay for right now. I don't think he's going to turn around and like run back. Okay, but that being said, let's cut up here and let's try to get some of the spider venom. Sakura asked if I play standing up or if I just have impeccable posture. Uh, I try to have really good posture. I'm sitting down right now. I wish I was standing up. I, I want to get a, a desk that can stand up, kind of like Co-Carnage's desk. can go from sitting to standing whenever he wants. Uh, that would be cool. But no, I'm sitting. I just try to have really good posture uh, because if I don't, I'm a tall person. So if I have bad posture, it's going to like hurt my back, not only in the short term, but like over time. I had bad posture as a kid. And then when I was in my early 20s, I started weightlifting, so I, I had to develop better posture to not absolutely kill myself. And yeah, it's a struggle, and this, the chair I'm using isn't the greatest, but I found that no matter what chair I use, I just have to kind of force myself to have good posture. The chair only helps minimally. Liam asked, is this my first webcam vid? No, oh, we've done we've done three days of having the cam on. I think the first day I didn't have it on all day. Yesterday we had it on all day. It's not the first day. I, I kind of lose track of time. It's, it's been a real blur the past few days. It's been great. Blood Moon, yeah, that's a good point. We, we could go down there and grab the flight point. I forget that they have a camp so close. Oh, no, let's do this. Uh, what do we have on us? Ooh, that's damage. That's why. Well, that was a close one. We'll take a little breather at that. Most people seem to like the face cam. I guess it feels like yeah, more connected, more immersive. I mean, I've been stuck with my face my whole life, so I really have no desire to see it. But if other people don't mind it, I guess it, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, I've gotten over most of my 
most of my dislikes about it, I've been I've been working through them. Because at first I didn't think I was going to face cam. I thought it would just be a big distraction from the content and, you know, I had excuses for why I didn't want to do it. Usually, like, the more excuses I make for not wanting to do a thing that I should do, like, the more likely I am to just eventually just do it. Because I see the I see the excuses mounting up. And I feel like if any of these excuses were valid, you wouldn't keep having more excuses. <laughs> Rapagos, hello, Martin, thank you for being here. You guys are stuck with your faces too? Yeah. And and the way things are set up, I'm I'm not stuck with your faces. And you know, it's not equal or fair, but that's that's how it is. I've been told that, yeah, that I have a good voice for an audiobook. I don't believe in it because I feel like someone who does an audiobook, they they have more of a dynamic range because they're gonna do like different voices and stuff. And I feel like I could probably do a little bit of that, but I feel like it would be really, really tiring. I feel like it would be really, really hard work. And like, depending on the project you're doing, you might not like it at all. And it's acting work ultimately, so it's probably a big hassle to even get into the industry. You would need to like know an agent, <laughs> someone who could like literally get you in, or you'd have to have a background in like acting in general or some adjacent background. And the only speaking background I have is I, I taught classes for H&R Block and uh, developed materials for those classes for eight years. So I, I have classroom teaching experience, but that's not really, that's not going to help your resume for being a voice actor or like an ebook reader or something, you know. And a lot of that stuff is really about who you know. And I don't know anybody. Tim, welcome, man. Thanks for being here. Martin, isn't this the music from when your character dies? Uh, I'm not sure. This is just the Duskwood music. This is just the in-game stuff. So whatever they have programmed to play here in Duskwood, that's what we're hearing right now. It does kind of sound like it has some of the ambience of when you're, like, you're running around as, as a spirit, but I, think, I don't think there's music then. I think there's just ambient noise when you are a spirit. We haven't spent a lot of time as a spirit on this character, so I, it's not really fresh in my memory. Tim, the last night's stream went on for far too long. I got really tired, but it was a fun time. I, I can't remember if we had any really close calls later at night. Weston Burger says, I have the perfect voice for a WoW stream. I, I like that because, you know, since that's what I'm doing, I'm, I'm glad to get that feedback. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. I, I wouldn't say I have the perfect voice for anything. I have a sufficient voice to be able to do what I love. Which is to be here with you guys doing this. And I'm, I'm happy to have at least that. Uh, we're gonna need a heal, but I don't think I should run from this. We have to watch for poisons going up, though. There's the poison. My favorite race in WoW. Hmm, I don't know if anymore I have a favorite race. I have races that I really don't like the silhouette and like the look of them. Like it's hard for me to play a male troll. It's hard for me to play a male orc. I don't, I would rather have the straight back orcs. 
Sometimes it could be hard for me to play the short races because the camera perspective is so weird, but then again I had a lot of fun on our Gnome Warrior and it didn't bother me at all. And sometimes like the short races, they're like lost in the ground clutter. They're like much shorter than the ground clutter, but favorite race? Hmm. Dylan, I used to really love the male Tauren, but these days when I get him uh, in the game and he's moving around, like, I know it's an illusion, but his movements seem so slow that for some... And he fills up so much of the camera that, like, for some reason, the big, bulky male Tauren bothers me these days. It's part of the reason why we didn't play a lot of the Tauren yet in Wrath of the Lich King, because, yeah, I should race change him, maybe, but I don't even know. Can you race change uh, characters in Wrath? Is that service even... Of course it's probably available. Why wouldn't it be? I should, I should check out race changing and maybe maybe two and arc. Oh no! Oh no! Oh god! <laughs> okay, we came way too far into the cemetery. Let's stun him and let's go go go. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be okay. We're not gonna get killed to Morla Deem. Yeah, I need a shield. We had shields for a while, and I don't have a shield right now. And I need to put it out on my bar so that we can we can pop it on whenever we're just getting attacked. We, we gotta run away. You know what? I think the speed increase definitely helped us out a lot there. And I'm really excited to get the second point into that because we need it. We need it. Yeah, it is so easy to die. <laughs> $25 for... I can't afford that for a race change. Oh, jeez. For for twenty five more dollars, I could I just boost a character like a new character. Twenty five dollars for a race change should be like ten bucks. If it was ten bucks, I bet they'd make more money because people would race change more frequently because of the low cost. But making it twenty five just means I can't afford it. Tactical warrior, yeah, I should have marked him, man. Gosh, and yeah, it was the speed that got us away. Absolutely terrifying. Okay, we're not we're not we're not going down in this area. He's over here. Like this whole quadrant of the cemetery, that's off limits. We gotta stick over here if we're working in the cemetery. That's that's just how we have to do it. Yeah, Tim, yeah, like Tactical Warrior said, I think I'm gonna have next time I see him, and I, I hope I don't see him anytime soon, I'm gonna mark him. We'll have to give him the X or something. That 35 elite man, he did he did not want to drop off of us. <laughs> Without the speed boost, I don't know. That might have been the end of this one. That might have been the end of this one. So so where are we going? That's not here. Or what can we do that's safe? You'd think getting the the wolf links would be safe if I can stop selling them. It's just that the drop rate is pretty atrocious. Jason, the speed boost is is permanent. We, we're gonna have we have four percent to our movement speed now, and we're gonna have eight percent to our movement speed mounted and on foot when we go into the second point of the talent. So we just get to keep it. We are currently running four percent faster than we have in the past. It's really overpowered, yeah, and I had never thought about that. Yeah, it was Tactical Warrior that told me to look at it and to consider it. And for Hardcore, yeah, it's overpowered. Yeah, it never would have occurred to me because it would have been one of those talents that, like, doing normal play, you, you probably wouldn't take it. 
you'd probably want to go in for like more damage or more crit or something, but uh, for for hardcore, you can't skip it. Speak with Tavern Keep Smiths. Safe travels. Yeah, Whitney, more Ledeem is the worst. There's the other one, too. Isn't, isn't there another elite? More Ledeem and then Morbid Fell. But Morbid Fell, maybe he's like in a house or something. Maybe he doesn't path around. An unholy DK could outrun us. Yeah. Luckily, we won't ever have to deal with that. Do I even want to be taking on these ghouls? I don't know. Seems kind of sketchy. Let's bring him down here. We'll hit him with an exorcism. There's Eliza, but don't you have to click on the dirt with an item or something to get Eliza to come out of the grave? Is she an elite? Oh, I hate when enemies spawn tiny little enemies after they die. It's gross and hard to target. Morbid Fell is in the house. Okay, good. It's just more Ladeem that's running around like a crazy person. The spawn times on these guys are really quick. Yeah, I mean in hardcore I always kind of operate under the assumption that they're going to respawn basically right away because a lot of times depending on the area and how many players are on it we get like hyper spawns basically. But yeah, being more careful here is going to be good because these guys are like at level with me. Can I please attack this guy? Like what is going on with my targeting here? Yeah, these, these little worms are going to be the death of me is what's going to happen if I'm not careful. My T to target was not was not attacking them. It's weird. A dragon in Duskwood? Martin? I'm not sure. The only area that I'm not familiar with is whatever might be happening in the central part. I'm not sure if I've ever gone in there, so... There could be... There could be a dragon there. I, I don't know. I All I know is, like, there's stitches, there's Morbid Fell. Don't go into the crypt? Yeah, we're probably not going to be able to go into the crypt. Although, I, I feel like... Don't we have to for one of the types of enemies we need for like a future kill quest? This this place is crawling. This is probably you're level 27. I don't think so. You know what? Mm -mm. Back to the wolves we go. I'd love to be getting kill experience, but let's just focus on getting these wolf flanks. That's going to be, like, really one of the only safe things that we can do right now. And there is a boss dragon in the central area, Whitney says. Yeah, that makes sense. I've never been in that area. He's not always there. We're probably not going to go find out. Is the dragon Alexstrasza? I mean, if it's Alexstrasza, I, I might have to go see. <laughs> I, 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 if I could see, you know, classic era Alexstrasza, even if it's just in dragon form, it's not Alexstrasza. Okay, good, because I, I don't want to go get killed by Alexstrasza. It's an emerald dragon. I'm assuming it's not Ysera.
short bow, I, I think like everybody here would love Classic Plus with any new content. Any new content, dungeon, raids, zones for leveling. I, I kind of want all of it. I don't think it should just be a raid. I think if they do Classic Plus, they have to do it the right way. And that means adding new content, adding new zones, adding new quests to existing zones that are otherwise like in a deficit of quest. Places like Ajara should be reworked to be like a lower level questing zone with new content in it. That is what I would like to see out of a Classic Plus. Not only would I like to see a Scarlet Monastery raid, I want to see a bunch of new stuff. And then I want there to be like an even cadence of new stuff that stretches out into the future. That would be like the what I want to see in a Classic Plus. What I don't want is like a half-assed Classic Plus uh, where they do some quality of life changes and add a single raid and then never revisit it. Leo, this is the first and maybe the only stream of the day. I'm not really sure, so... But yeah, you, you, we came on at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so... Not quite an hour ago. And we'll go for a while. And I'm not sure if I'll get on later in the evening or not. If I do get on later in the evening, it's probably going to play some Diablo. You know, that's what I'm probably going to do. I didn't play any Diablo last night. I kind of been itching now to like get back into it and press those buttons some more, so... If I do a second stream today, it'll probably be a D4 stream. Which I know is not exciting to many of you. And that's totally fine. D4 is a darker, different game. For sure. Martin, yeah, another max level zone. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be a leveling zone. They could put some new max level zones in with some with some solid questing, some solid stories, and just like some good some good gear. Like, it could be great. They could do all kinds of stuff. I, I want them to do everything. When they do it, I want them to, to add all different kinds of content to the game. Jason, I'm not going to burn myself out, man. I used to have to go stand in front of a classroom for like 10 hours a day and physically be there with 30 to 40 other people uh, trying to help them learn, like struggling. To, and it was stressful because like they were trying to learn how to do jobs. So like there were high stakes for them. Uh, and so I'm not going to get burned out doing this, my man. This is relaxing for me. Uh, I'm not going to get burned out. But I appreciate the concern, though. I do appreciate that. But it's not going to happen, man. Not playing World of Warcraft. Not and hanging out with you guys. You guys are the least stressful group I could hope for. You know, you guys are great. Shortbow, you ask if I think Classic Plus should get the OSRS treatment, or do you think the devs should have freedom outside of player wants? Um, I'm not too familiar with OSRS, but I, I think you're talking about how like they basically take all player feedback and try to somehow incorporate like the majority of it into the game. Do they ha are they really good about just listening to what the community wants? I feel like it has to be like yeah, it has to be about the community and what the community wants, and then it has to like it has to be a little bit of both, right? The devs have to have some power, but like. When, especially when it comes to a game like WoW Classic that is sustained by like basically it's, it's loving community. Yeah, you have, to, you have to ask what the community wants and then you have to give them what they want. And you can also do some stuff that you want, you know, as a developer, as a development team. You can put some stuff in that you think is cool that like maybe nobody asked for. But yeah, you, you definitely have to get a solid read on what the majority of people want and not just the majority but what do like the niche groups want you know people want things like player housing more professions like you got to listen to the broad spectrum spectrum of players and just like your endeavor should be to create a better game not put your all of your own ideas into the game as a developer when it comes to a game like this 
they do polls. The polls have to be above 70% to get into the game. That, that's brave of them to do it based on polls um, and, and not just have, so, you know, sometimes you do a poll, but then you do other data collection. There's other ways for you to collect data about player behaviors and patterns. Um, so leaving it up to a poll seems like that's like pure democracy, I guess. So I can't really disagree with that. That that seems interesting. Do I think Blizzard would ever, ever, ever leave any choice to a poll? No, because the Blizzard can't do that. They're owned by Activision, which is a giant ass megacorp. And uh, they have to, a megacorp's objective is to simply make more money for its shareholders. So every decision they make, everything they put into the game kind of has to be aimed at that uh, because they're owned by Activision. So do I think that they'll ever be have the freedom to rely on a poll and just put into the game whatever gets above a certain threshold? They won't be able to do that. Rob, thanks for being here. I appreciate you being around the channel for so long as well. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah, the idea of like totally trusting the community sounds good. Like here's here's a poll, like whatever gets above 70% here goes into the game. Like that sounds super amazing. Uh, it's just that yeah, I just it's, it's never going to happen for a while. Like I don't I don't know who owns and operates OSRS, but it's it's probably not a megacorp. If it is, like kudos to them. That's awesome. They're very progressive in how they run their corporation. I hope their shareholders are happy. Yeah, Shortbow, I was thinking that there's lots of ways to manipulate a poll, especially when your sample base is maybe like 100,000 or a couple hundred thousand people. It would be really easy to create a bot or something that could create accounts and fill out the poll, and it would be very easy for a handful of people to drastically sway the results of an open poll that doesn't have any control or any like data gathering outside of it. And so, and that's the reason why Activision Blizzard couldn't, would never risk it. And I don't think I would risk it either if it were my personal choice on how to do it. Uh, just because I know that that kind of data can be fabricated with people just like assiduously making hundreds and thousands of accounts and filling out the poll because people will do that, especially when it's not like an enormous multi-million player community. Martin, Blizzard is doing very good at actually implementing player feedback recently, especially when it comes to Dragonflight and retail. And so I definitely think that they're doing better in that regard. Uh, and it seems like they probably have, a have been given a little bit more leeway to actually listen to the community, where like I said, a lot of times decisions are not made by developers on what's going to go into a game. Ultimately, decisions are made by people who are money people, people who are leader people, people who are CEOs and VPs who don't really know or care about video games. They care about looking at the data and making choices that they think is going to give their shareholders more money because that's their, that's their only objective. So a lot of times with the, with bigger corporations, not a lot of power rests with the devs on exactly what can go into the game. Even if they want to listen to player feedback or they are hearing player feedback, you know, the choices don't get made that reflect it. But I, they're doing better with that. So I feel like they've been given a little bit more leeway to actually interface with their community and make changes to the game. And not changes where they're like, oh, we'll change it in the next expansion. Like they're they're actually making changes. Even not even in half patches, they're they're doing a lot of new content and changes. Even in half patches, like the gear system that they put into 10.1, they would never have done that in the past. That that's that's an entire expansion feature, but they did it in a in a point one patch. Uh, and in the in the past, if you're talking about like BFA or Shadowlands, they never would have introduced something so big and, and game changing for the way gear can be progressed it would have been held off to the next expansion because it would have been seen as a way to pull people back in and it would have been like, let's save this, let's keep this in our sleeve for the next time, let's not fix it now. But the fact that they're fixing stuff now is, is really heartening. You think it's because they see more people leaning towards classics so they're trying to appease more people? I think it's because they see that their player numbers are way ping down. It might not have to do specifically with classic. If you look at the number of guilds who completed the first tier of Dragonflight raids, 
it's more than people that, that it's more than the people that completed Sepulchre, but it's like half of the people that completed raids back in BFA. It's more than half of the people that completed raids back in Legion. The numbers are way down as far as active players at Endgame, and WoW Retail is all about its Endgame. So when their guild completion numbers for a tier of, for a raid are that low, like, yeah, they're worried because people are gone. They're off to other games. Some people go to Classic, but a lot of people just leave leave entirely. You know, they go to places like Guild Wars 2. They go to Final Fantasy 14. They go to other genres of games. And I think that's a lot of what's happened with people who used to play World of Warcraft retail at Endgame. Is their guilds, if they were in, in gaming social groups, they've gone to play other games. And that's why raid completion numbers are way, way, way down compared to uh, even BFA. Uh, Dre's man, they, we already pay a sub. I don't think you want to be charging people per character. That's just going to get people to not play. It's a thought, but it just wouldn't work, man. Sakura asks if I like the Dragonflight expansion. There are things I like about it. I like the artwork. I feel like the story is better than it was in Shadowlands. They they have a lot of cool technology now to do like some interesting cutscenes using their in-game character models. The in-game cutscenes that use the in-game character models and have the lip syncing and the cinematic camera angles are really spot on. And they've come a long way with that. It's, ni it's nice to see. That being said, uh, the story of Dragonflight does not resonate with me at all. Even though I can acknowledge that the writing is a little bit better than it was in Shadowlands. It just doesn't resonate with me. I, I, can, I can fly around on my dragon and I have fun with the flying of the dragon. I, I think that that's really cool. But what it does is it, it shrinks the world down so I no longer feel like I'm in a massive World of Warcraft. I feel like I'm flying across a couple game levels really, really quickly. And so I think there are lots of good things about retail to make the people who really love it happy. But I'm not playing it right now because none of it really sinks with me. I don't really get deep into any of it. The story isn't holding me. All the retcons that they did to the lore in Shadowlands really drove me away from really caring a lot about the lore, it turns out. And that was one of my main impetuses to like continue playing and be current with the story. That's kind of a, that's an equivocating answer, kind of, but yeah, my, my feelings on it are split. I don't have an interest in playing it, but I think it's, in, it's retail that's in the best state it's been in in a long time. Vassy, you want to know if I ever did Mythic Raids with a strict schedule? No. No, the last time I raided a lot would have been in Legion. And I just have no interest in the endgame grind, and part of that is just not being in a guild, you know? I, th I think when you're in a guild of people that you really love to play with, and you've been with that those people for a long time, then like raiding is a lot of fun. And like outside of being in a group of people that you like playing with, for me, raiding is pointless. Grinding out gear is pointless. Uh, the, I like to get gear because I like to help my group of people that I knew and enjoyed playing with. I like to help them succeed. And when it's pugging it or LFR. Uh, Mythic Five Mans, you know, I, I hate timed trials. I hate anything that just drives people to go faster, faster, faster. I, I, I would have loved like a Mythic Five Man that was just a really, really hard Five Man that you had to just carefully pick your way through using crowd control and all of your class abilities would have been a lot more interesting to me, so I never got into Mythic Five Mans. So no, I have not engaged with like multiplayer endgame in World of Warcraft since Legion and just a little bit of the first tier of BFA before I realized it just wasn't fun to me anymore. The the treadmill just wasn't enjoyable anymore. Patrick Tarrett, I appreciate that, man. Thank you for that. And thank you for being here. Vassi, you, you, went, you did a raid schedule like really hardcore for two years and you regret it? Yeah. I can see how you might... Especially because like I feel like a lot of guilds end up breaking apart and stuff these days. So it's like you can spend a lot of time with a group of people grinding out gear and stuff and then like something can happen and like either you can't play anymore or somebody can't play and then it all kind of falls apart. You're left looking for another guild and it's like, do I really want to find another guild? Do I really want to stay on this treadmill? Oh. 
Tactical Warrior, that's interesting. Apparently when you do dungeons in retail, you can save the loot bag you get from running the randoms, put them in the bank, and when you open them when you're near max level, it's higher level gear. Because they it doesn't it doesn't draw the, the gear score number until you open the bag, right? Huh. That's actually really cool. I don't know do they I don't know if they intend it to be that way, but like, you know, they obviously know that's how it works. Joe, what's my favorite classic dungeon? It's gotta be Shadowfin Keep, I think. I think, like, just for the memories alone that I have, it was always, like, the biggest memory was, like, tanking Shadowfen Keep on my first warrior back in Vanilla. I have, like, just, like, so many, like, clear memories of running that dungeon. So atmospheric. Yeah, Joe, it's totally a cloth dungeon. Back then, man, I was just having a great time. I think, well, you can get the shield. The tanking shield drops off the one guy. But yeah, I, I didn't care about gear back then. I was ecstatic that a group invited me and was going to let me tank. Because <laughs> it was like, you know, I had just started tanking. I had just started, like, learning how to tank. So I was always just happy that someone would let me come and try to tank. I was probably nervous as hell about screwing up, you know. Patrick, you want to know if I play PS5 or just PC? I have an Xbox Series X, but mostly on that, I, I watch my wife beat games because by the end of the day, I, I'd rather watch some... If I'm going to play like a single player game or something, I'd rather watch somebody else play and just kind of hang out. So I'll, I'll watch my wife play stuff. And, and if she's not in the mood to play, I'll turn on like Co-Carnage or Chris Odd or something if I want to watch some first person or some uh, single player stuff. I don't have a PS5 yet. I want to get one now that the price is like more normal because there are some exclusives uh, for PlayStation that I'd like to play. Mainly I, I want to be able to play the next part of Final Fantasy VII Remake when it comes out. Shizum, your favorite dungeon is Maradon? Wow. It's a big dungeon. It's it's a huge dungeon. The last time I did Maradon might have been like a year, a year and a half ago. It might have been on Artoran Warrior who's now sitting in Northrend at level 71. And it was like a three or a three and a half hour run. And that was the last time I told myself then that I would never do Maradon again. And I haven't done it since. It was a three and a half hour Mara. Like... I, I thought I'd be in the dungeon for like two hours, two and a half hours. It was crazy. I mean, like parts of it were really fun, but it just, it, it was raid length. And I was, I was not mentally prepared to be there for raid length. And I haven't done Mara since. Joe, you want to see more heroic dungeons? I want to see more heroic dungeons, man. When, when they add the LFD, we will do all the heroic dungeons. And we'll do all the Heroic Dungeons if we can LFD for Heroic Plus, like we should be able to. If we can only queue for normal Heroic, I mean, they're super easy and kind of boring. So, we, we gotta do Heroic Plus at least. But only if we can use the LFD. So, so the Ice Crown patch probably. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's probably going to be the Ice Crown patch. We're going to be we're going to be leveling the uh, the Torn Warrior in Northrend in a recorded series, and uh, I'll probably do some dungeons as part of leveling that guy up. But as far as end game heroic stuff, like not until I have LFD. So do a DPS on the Paladin. Uh, I think right now the Paladin has a tank spec. And a healing spec. I don't. I don't know if I have the DPS spec going. Either way, my DPS gear is non-existent. It's absolute hot garbage. My my healing set is the one that's like raid worthy, and the, the tanking set is probably like heroic dungeon and like Nax ten worthy. Maybe not Nax. It'd be Nax ten worthy if I was in a, a group of people who didn't care about gear score. Leo, you know what dungeons were hard when they first came out? Cataclysm, five-man heroics. Those were hard too when they first got released. 
and then they got nerfed. I don't think the BC stuff got nerfed as quickly or as hard. So yeah, that stuff stayed challenging a little bit longer, maybe. Yeah, Joe, I did an old Duar run, but I, I didn't record it because the guild, they needed me to be in Discord to hear their chatter. And uh, I didn't have time to, to figure out how to separate the Discord chatter from my system audio that I was recording. And I didn't want to record all their chatter and stuff. And then I thought to myself, well, any guild that I pug with is going to need me to be in their Discord, obviously. And I don't really want to be in a random guild's Discord and trying to do a recording. Because then I'm going to have to explain to them what I'm doing, who I am. It's going to hold up the raid. They might get annoyed. It's just like this whole can of worms that if I pug a raid, I like, I have to open up this can of worms if I'm going to be in their Discord and recording. Because then I have to explain to them that I'm going to have to mute them. <laughs> Rambles, why are you muted? Because I can't have your audio in my recording because it's like, you know, privacy stuff. Steve, good afternoon, man, and thank you. Thank you for being here. Suzumi, you want to know if I've decided what class and race I'll play on the first for our first official hardcore server this summer? Uh, I think we're kind of thinking about either a Shadow Priest or a Warlock. The highest level Warlock we got was to level 11. Our level 25 Priest died in the elevator shaft in Undercity. So we didn't really get a fair shake on that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of what I thought, but I have no, nothing concrete yet. We, we could have a long time. We Someone had mentioned yesterday... And maybe one of you guys who are more like tuned in to the rest of the hardcore scene might know this, but somebody said that there had been an interview on somebody's stream where they had talked about the release window for the hardcore servers. I've looked for news on Google and Wowhead and on YouTube, and I, I haven't seen this uh, interview or seen any confirmation of information. But a couple people told me there had been an interview on somebody's stream, and I forgot the guy's name. Uh, that they had talked about the release window for the hardcore servers, but mm, still nothing on Wowhead as far as like this morning when I checked. But yeah, I'm kind of waiting until like we have a date to really think about it too much. Joe Uluar does drop a mount, but you have to roll on it with the group, so like only one person gets it. And I think it's a chance to drop. I don't even I don't even know if it drops all the time. I can't believe we have not gotten our, our 10th wolf flank yet. It's kind of incredible. These wolves must, just must not have a lot of meat on them, I guess. I did root a, loot a ring. I rooted a ling too, but then I had to put it back. Arcane resistance, that's that's useless, basically. Mm -hmm. And we are almost full on inventory again. Let's do the scroll of agility. Let's go ahead and we will eat some food. Uh, hang on, I should, I should just drop it, but I'll hang on to it and sell it. We're not going to use this, it's so little that it's not going to help. Kind of the same thing with these. We we might just sell these. We need more. We need more of these right here. Uh, fair point. You know that that that's fair to say. It's not total. It will be useful when we get hit by arcane magic, which I don't know when that's going to happen. Maybe useless right now. It was on Sarthas stream when they had World Tour Hardcore. Well, that's... Oh, yeah, Steven, that was when they said this summer. Someone indicated to me yesterday that they had given a number of weeks on someone's stream literally yesterday. So I don't know if they just misunderstood something or if they were trying to one-guy me. But then later, somebody else kind of told me the same thing, that there had been a hardcore announcement yesterday about like a number of weeks when we could expect it, but I, I, it might have just been misinformation. Uh, because if it wasn't misinformation, I, I feel like it would be on uh, Wowhead or maybe there'd be a clip on Asmund's channel about it or something. I don't know. 
I haven't seen anything. Denzel Berg, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And thank you for being here, for coming to the stream. Barbed Club of Healing, plus four to healing spells. Oh yeah, Denzel Berg, what time is it there in Sweden? I want to get some world clocks up on the wall in front of me. So I can kind of just know like at a glance like what time it might be for some of you guys. Because yeah, I'm really bad about like understanding exactly how many hours ahead we are like on the other side of the planet. <laughs> Not quite the other side of the planet, but you know, across the Great Divide. It's 1950, and then I gotta do some math here, so... so I can't even do that math, can I? Hmm... So 1900, yeah, military time and me don't work very well, unfortunately. My brain is bad at doing simple mathematics and figuring out, like, what that is. 750, I thought I was getting towards 7 with my, with my, in my head counting. Minus 12. Yeah, and most people's brains can do a quick, like, plus or minus 12, like, automatically, and my brain can't do that. I don't have a very good math brain. When I learned how to do math in school, they taught us to count by counting these dots that they put on the letters. So, like, two had a dot here, and a dot here, three had a dot here, here, and here. So we would count these dots that were on the letter characters. And so, like, ever since they taught me to kind of do math that way and think about numbers having these dots on them, I have to, like, when I do math, I count the dots in my head. And they, I think they kind of broke my brain. Yeah, they didn't teach us mental math. It was like, you know, the one has a dot here, two has two dots, and eight has dots. The eight's dots were like two on each side of the eight. And then like in your head, you're counting these dots. Eventually they stopped teaching kids how to count like that. They don't do that anymore um, for good reason. But kind of because of that, I can't do a lot of mental mathematics. Multiplication, I'm good at multiplication in my head, but adding and subtracting in my head is kind of a no-go. Lael, you're a figure counter? I'll do that too if I can't envision the dots clearly enough. Yep. Oh, we've got everything we need from these guys. What is this tracking? Ghoul things. We're tracking ghoul things. We don't care about that right now. We can go back to town, I think, now. We have to buy an item off of a vendor to complete this one, I think. Stormwind, Stormwind Seasoning Herbs. Okay, so we have to go to, to Stormwind. It couldn't be something that we get off of any trade goods vendor. It had to be Stormwind specific. And do they tell us what vendor we're going to get those from? For the herbs, seek out Felicia Gump in her Canal District flower shop in Stormwind. Okay. AQIUSD, thank you, man. Thank you for being here. My face still looks like me. Yeah, it's it, it is pretty close to my avatar. Yeah, Steve, you're right. I'm sure, like, my dad or my mom would know. Probably my dad more so would, would still probably track time that way. But I, I couldn't do it. They didn't bring me up with, with telling time that way. I just learned time in school. They just taught us how to, how to read time on the clock the normal way. And they never really went out of their way to try to engrave that in me. By the time I was four, they, they, were, they got out of the military. So I wasn't, like, a military kid for very long in my life or anything like that. Yeah. 
I haven't got the bronze tube yet, so I'll need that as well. Can we get that from like an engineering vendor? Open guards, I, I think we might go either priest or warlock for for the fresh start hardcore whenever that happens. Okay, so let's see. What do we want to do? Let's let's just run back probably the safe way, which is going to be along the northern coast here. I'm, I'm not going to run down the road and risk a stitches encounter again. So we'll just stay up here for now. And now if, if, if this stuff weren't all gray and if we weren't on a paladin, I probably wouldn't be running through it like this. We'll stop in a second and we'll heal up. I just don't want to fight any more gray mobs right now. What spec in Warlock? I would probably just go Affliction and just dot everything up. And that way we can just dot a bunch of stuff up, have the Voidwalker tank it, and sit back and wand it. Dan, I'm glad you're digging them. Thanks for being here, man. And with the time it is for you there, I think that's probably probably a good idea, right? For me, it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon, so it would be a little too early. <laughs> Demonology is recommended for hardcore. I wonder if that's because, Alex, maybe it has some save me buttons, like, can you, is it like you get a sacrifice pet or something that restores you or bubbles you? Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's a survivability thing. I, I should definitely look into that, though. It I would be interested in playing a different spec that's not Affliction, but it always has been that, like, Affliction has been the recommended leveling spec for, like, the, the normal way to play. But as we found with, like, different talents on the Paladin, that, like, the normal way to play is not necessarily the way you want to play hardcore. So yeah, if, if Demonology has some cool survival stuff or something else that's really powerful about it, that would be awesome. 9pm, Dan? Yeah, that's perfect, man. What pet did we get at level 20? I don't know the Warlock that well. Our Warlock died at level 11, so we got the Imp and the Voidwalker, and then we, we got killed. Tactical Warrior says you get a, a Sacrifice Voidwalker for a bubble in the demo tree. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, Denzel Berg, you, you can't bubble hearth, man. It's against the hardcore rules. Yeah. They realize how powerful that would be, I guess, and that you can't do it. But we, we don't know what the restriction will be in official hardcore, so it, mi it might not be a restriction in official hardcore, but right now using the add-on on Blood Cell Buccaneer server, it's uh, it's restricted. So, yeah. The Succubus quest is hard and you have to travel far? Yeah, I mean, maybe we would just stick with the Voidwalker though for like survivability, or, or is the Succubus able to kind of be a tank with her whip or whatever she wields? Whip tank?
Otukan Paladins are, are OP right now. <laughs> As many people have told me, a lot of people feel like Paladin is like easy mode hardcore. I argue that nothing in hardcore is easy, but I definitely understand that we have a lot of get out of jail free buttons that have certainly saved us time and time again. And not every class has those, so... I definitely get it when people say that it's, uh, it's overpowered or it's easy mode. It doesn't offend me because I, I need easy mode. We've gotten every character class killed once at least. Squidman, Discipline Priest is amazing for survivability. You go into like improved power word shield, you're like, you're basically never going to get killed as a Disc Priest. What's going to happen though is like, your kill rate's going to slow down. So we leveled a, a Disc Priest in a vanilla era classic. We got it to like level 50 something before BC came out. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was highly survivable. You don't have a lot of downtime from pull to pull. If you go, you have to go into shadow to get spirit spirit tap. It's a it's an ability that when you kill an enemy, you get some mana regen. So you, you have to go into shadow for that, but then you go into discipline tree, you get improved uh, power word shield, and you're you're golden after that. Inventory is full. Let's just beeline it back to town then. In that case. Johnny Hoover, that's huge, man. Off to boot camp? Best of vibes and best of luck to him, man. That's that's awesome. I'm sure you gotta be like super proud, but also like at the same time, like maybe a little bit worried or trepidatious. My kid's eight, so I can't imagine sending him off anywhere, but I know one day I'm gonna have to send him off somewhere. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I know it's going to be a day when I'm probably going to be really proud, but I'm probably going to be really sad and kind of worried. Maybe super worried, depending on what he chooses to go do. But, yeah, that's awesome. Three more to go? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna feel weird when they're all gone though, you know. It's gonna feel weird. Yeah, I, I broke the tradition of going into the military on my family. I, I had asthma as a kid and uh, they, they didn't want me. And I was uh, I was also super unhealthy. Like I wasn't I wasn't a really healthy teenager, or or young adult. And uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I missed my opportunity. But by the time I got like physically competent, to the point where that would have been an option for me, like I was twenty. I was probably twenty five by the time I would have felt confident enough to do that. And uh, like I said, with the asthma, they don't care. That I, even if it doesn't bother you anymore, if they see it on your medical records, they just don't want you. Yo, know, Tukin, my health as a young adult sucked. Uh, I was uh, I was six foot four and 150 pounds until uh, you know I started working out when I was 21, and it took a few years for me to figure out like I had to eat more to like put any weight on. So by the time I was like 23, 24, I was like de decently healthy, and I put on enough weight to not be like really underweight. Be careful. I was a stupid kid who was like, I was told all the right things, you know, but I thought I knew better, and so I didn't really listen. It took me a long time to like, look at myself and decide to change. Aiden, you want to experience the full story and lore of WoW. You're playing retail, you got to level 60 with a character in BFA. You haven't finished BFA. 
Aiden, man, I wish I had like an easy thing to say or even like an optimistic thing to say about being able to experience the entire story of WoW because like in the game, the way that they have the game set up, you really can't. There might be some like really good guides out there because what you'd have to do is you'd have to get to like max level basically and then you'd go back and you'd just play through old content to see the story including like soloing old raids and dungeons that have story in them. But the bigger problem is kind of like, it's hard to do the expansion content story, so every every expansion, not expansion, but patch content, so every expansion has certain patches and they add story events and stuff in, and for some expansions, even if you're doing chromie time, it's hard to see all the story in the in the patch content, and it's hard to do see the story in the raids unless you go like solo the raid at a higher level. It's just not easy. If you're super interested in the WoW lore and story, Check out Noble's channel, and uh, he does a really good job. There's a couple other guys that do really good lore videos. Platinum WoW, somebody mentioned, was really good for explaining like everything about WoW that you could want to know, the lore, the stories, the characters. There are some really good creators out there who like they take what is in the game that is incomprehensible as you play through the game, and they give it like the order and understanding that you need to really appreciate the lore, the stories, and the characters. And yeah, unfortunately, like if you want to know the story of WoW and the lore of WoW, I have to point you to a YouTube creator because they do such a poor job of really expressing it in the game, especially when you're talking about like the content that's not current content. Like the story of Dragonflight, you'll get to see all that if you play now. But if you wanted to know the story of, of, of Warlords of Draenor or the story of Legion, you're going to want to go to Noble's channel or, or Platinum WoW or somebody like that uh, to really like get a good handle on it, unfortunately. That's really the best advice I can give, brother. And then, like, and listen to this. If, if, you, if you put the effort in to try to see all that stuff in the game yourself, I worry that it still wouldn't be coherent enough to make sense, and it would just end up feeling like a waste of time. When you can go to somebody's YouTube channel and they have great content, you can turn it on in the background and just kind of listen to them explain things. And, and, and Noble Noble's really good. And I'm sure there's some other really great creators out there too that just do the lore videos and stuff. Need help? We're not gonna sell our lean wolf flanks because around. because we're not that stupid. Uh, but we could probably sell some other stuff. I buy and trade. We've got two main hand maces here. We don't need the healing. We don't need this. Spider Icker, I think, can go. Spider Silk, I don't think we'll need this. If we were tailoring, I'd say we need it. Yeah, nothing's worse than like somebody trying to get into the game you love and they ask you how to best enjoy like the story of it and you have to tell them like you can't. It's so bad. It feels bad. It's like cuz then it's like well why have they think like well why do you like this game? It's like I can't explain it. I, the world is so good. The storytelling like for a player catching up is never going to be good, but the you? world and the lore like the immersion are so good. Yeah, Aiden, and I, I totally get, like, you want to have your character go on that freaking journey. I get that, man. I wish everybody could. Everybody should be able to, like, start a character at level 1, and there should be an MSQ within an expansion that you pick that can get you the whole story. And Blizzard could do that. They could put a lot of work in to trim down the MSQ of each of their expansions, take the story out of the raids and put it into solo content, and they could do it. But they, they haven't done it, and they're, they're probably never going to do it. And yeah, unfortunately, there, there isn't a good way to take a character on that big journey. And like when you tr do try to do it in the game, you're going to hit max level really quick. And then, yeah, you can go back and do the different chromie times and play the different expansion packs. 
but because of the way that the story is hidden mostly in patch content and at the end of raids and at the end of some dungeons, I feel like you'd even have to be like following a sturdy guide to tell you like what to do and what order to like even comprehend the stories of the past expansions. And it's sad. It makes me sad that it's like that, but that that's the truth of it. Uh, let's see. Do we want to do anything else here right now? Or should we go to Stormwind and buy the thing that we need for the quest? Maybe we should do that. Yeah, let's go get our Stormwind seasoning herbs. And I think I'm going to take a couple minutes in flight. I'm going to take a five minute break, five to seven minutes. I'm going to buy, I'll get some more coffee, maybe a quick snack. So if you guys want to hang out, I'd really appreciate it. If you guys got to go, you don't want to hang out, look at an empty chair, I totally understand. Uh, I'm going I'm to put us in flight and then I will be back. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you be have careful. to take off, thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys. I will be back in a few minutes.
All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out and being patient. I appreciate that. All right, so the seasoning herbs are going to be over here. Anything else we need to do while we're in Stormwind? We hit we hit 26. We could train. We're not going to get anything super cool, I don't think. Day on, hey man, my day and stream are going well. I am having a great time. Thank you for being here. Engineer Vendor for Bronze Tube. Engineer Vendor is going to be over in the Dwarven District. We could also do a little bit of smelting. Mm. Here we go. You need something? Light bless you. Mew asked if I have a girlfriend or a wife. Yes, I am married. Mm hmm For ten years this September. I don't also have a girlfriend right now, so just a wife right now. I don't have a wife and a girlfriend. Not at the moment. Master Creep, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad you I'm glad you like him. GMAC, yeah, yeah. ESO uploads are gonna continue just as the as the immersive recorded series. Probably coming Monday or Tuesday, you could probably expect to see continuation of ESO. And I'm also gonna be doing the Tor and Warrior Northrend questing as as an immersive recorded series. So I might alternate those every other day. Yuval, did you miss something important? I don't think so, man. Uh, I had to go AFK for a bit. We came over to Stormwind. We're going to train our abilities. We're going to visit the engineering vendor for a bronze tube. Maybe do a little bit of smelting. Tactical Warrior will want us to uh, make sure we smelt. And we should probably let some heavy wool bandages run. For the sake of our inventory. Good day to you. Uh, that is a Nomergon quest. <laughs> See you, you, you guys know how I feel about doing dungeons, so... Whenever you guys want to do a dungeon, you let me know. Send me an invite to a group and we'll do it. Until then, we're not going to pug it. Because we are going to try to keep the character alive. Uh, Flash of Light rank 2, absolutely, that is important. Seal of Righteousness, why did I Why did I think this level was not important? Oh, we, you know what, we don't use Seal of Righteousness right now, that's right. Uh, Blessing of Selv. Reducing threat generation, okay, not, not really going to be super useful, but we'll train it just to have it. Ret Aura, we're not really using, but we'll train it anyway. And that is it. Johnny Hoover, where do you train two-handed axes? That would be in Ironforge. There, there are two weapon vendors in Ironforge, and they like stand next to each other. One of them has some weapons, one of them has the other weapons. If you just talk to the one, you're going to be really shocked because they're not going to train you in anything but maybe crossbows or guns. And then you got to talk to the other one, and they'll have your two-handed weapons. I, I almost like just I didn't know what was going on. I talked to the one and I'm like, okay, we, where do we learn axes? And then the, the other guy was right behind him. You want to see my coffee? Well, I can't show you the coffee itself because that would require opening the lid. But I can show you my coffee mug. It, it's a Yeti. It keeps the coffee hot for like a while. Show me your coffee. You're like a probation officer. What's in the coffee? Mm. 
Yeah, the Yeti Cup is really good. The only problem is like, it has a bunch of moving parts. And uh, if you don't totally dissemble the cup like every other day and like let it soak and clean those individual parts, like taking it all apart, you build up what I will call coffee gunk within your moving parts of the lid. And you have to be like really studious about scrubbing it and cleaning it every other day, if not every single day. You can't just take the lid off and wash the lid. You got to dissemble the lid. It has like five or six pieces. So it's a great, it's a great mug. It requires a lot of care. Uh, it can get funky. <laughs> yeah, it does. And so I got to get to a point. I got to get one with just a lid with no moving parts. I, I want one with just the plastic, as, you know, for my desk. And then I can use this one when I'm in the car. But yeah, because I, I don't like using this one too much these days because I just got to scrub it every day. Once I learned what accumulated between the moving parts, I almost threw up. And so now I'm pretty good about cleaning it. But yeah, it's just a little bit of a hassle. Next rank of first aid, I think we're, we're going to be there, right? Uh, do we have to get all the way to 150 to train it? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be close. Do I have any wool in the bank? I may. But I, I think we pulled it all out, actually. Leo, yeah, they make a lid just for sipping. I wonder if I can get a lid that fits this mug that's a sipping lid. Maybe maybe that's what I can look for instead of having to get like a whole nother mug. King's honor. That would be better. Uh yeah, we can't uh we gotta get we gotta get straight to 150. We be can careful. check the bank just in case maybe I left some in there, but I, I have a memory that I thought we had pulled everything out that we had. Did I hear the new Avenged Sevenfold album yet? No, I don't I don't really listen to Avenged Sevenfold. I might have heard some of their stuff back when I was younger, but nothing really recently. I'm from Michigan, like the southeastern Michigan, and I grew up around Detroit, so all I listen to is Eminem, NF, and Quinn with the Roman numerals after his name. Because all those guys are also from the area that I lived. And, and yeah, <laughs> it's not all I listen to, but. Dan, do you think Stormwind needs some kind of like public transit, like a tram or like a, a monorail or something to kind of help us move around a bit faster? Maybe like an elevated rail would be good. Jory wants to know if I drink my coffee black or with milk. I put a little bit of whole milk in it. Yeah, no, no sweetener or anything like that. I, I like it to basically still taste like coffee. Just need to lighten it a little bit. What can I do for you? Hambo, yeah, the trade district is dead because there's not a million level 60 characters hanging out in it. So typically, like, the cities are the place for the max level characters to chill at. Everyone on this server, man, is we're out leveling trying to keep our characters alive and do the challenge. The server is super busy, it's just that there's nobody to stand in Stormwind because if there if there are any 60s, let's see what they're doing. Slash who, can we do slash who 60? We can do slash who 60. Oh, that's a lot of people at 60. There's more than 50. That's actually surprising. But look, they're out doing stuff, man. It's not the kind of, it's not the version of the game where like you stand in town waiting to go into an instance group usually. They're out, they're out doing stuff places. A lot of them are hanging out in Stranglethorn. But yeah, yeah, it leaves the cities kind of empty, except for people like us, we're coming here to use the bank. Look, there's a line at the bank, so how often do you see that? Uh, let's see, do we have any wool? No, yeah, we don't have any wool. We, we did, uh, ooh, we can, uh, we can learn that now. We can learn that now. No smelting today, Tactical Warrior. Sorry, man. No, maybe we'll do it. We gotta go, we gotta go back there anyway to get the engineering tube. We have these bronze bars. I don't think we're gonna do the blacksmithing part yet though. I should pop this in the bank. Shortbow, you say if I use a water purifier, I'll see less buildup. That's not a bad idea. I should probably use a water purifier. I just drink tap water because I'm slovenly. And I drink a lot of tap water. 
so... It could explain some of my mental deficits. SLS1 asked, what is the class that brings the most joy for me to play? That kind of changes depending on, uh, depending on what we're doing. Right now, the most joy I get is the class that's keeping me alive. So right now in Hardcore, that's been the Paladin. Um, but ultimately, I've played a lot of Warrior. I have a lot of fun on the Warrior. And historically, I've probably put the most hours into it across different characters. Uh, back to the, to the Dwarven District we go. Somebody will have to remind me to crank that back up after we are out of Stormwind. Because Stormwind music gets really, really, really loud. And sometimes I start to feel like I'm trying to like literally shout over it. To probably no effect. What do you guys think we should do after this? So when, when we're done in Stormwind, where are we going? Do we just keep risking the biscuit in Duskwood? Or is there somewhere we should maybe go grind on mobs for a bit? What was that green quest? Oh, okay, maybe we try this again. I think we've gained a couple of levels since we took these guys on. Karen, good morning. Thank you for being here. Joel, I feel the same way, man. I've tried to get into Dragonflight so many times, uh, and I, I just it, I can't stick to it. And I've just decided that that's the truth of the matter, and I've, I've been moving on. Tactical, yeah, I will. I'll put it back in the bank. I, I won't carry the bars around. That would be atrocious even for me. To go through the trouble of smelting it and then just like keep it in my inventory. <laughs> I won't do that to you, man. That would be not right. You don't deserve that. Yes, tactical. Let's do that. Let's go do the, uh, the the treasure map. Absolutely. We're we're just trying to find out like what kind of bag it gives, right? Whether it's an eight slot or a ten slot. Yeah, we we can go do that. It shouldn't be a problem. It is an 8 slot. Hmm. We don't really need an 8 slot. Do you think we'll get some quest XP from it? Like, will the next... It's subsequent It's subsequent quests, right? I have to think that maybe the subsequent ones will be green. Let's just, let's just go do it. It's an 8 slot because it's classic. Yeah. Probably. Maybe it'll be like a cool graphic. And if it is, I can replace one of the boring brown ones. I'm always up to have like a cool looking bag. So, we'll go check it out. JJ, you've been off work and you haven't been able to uh, to play WoW. When you're off work, do you like make sure that you like do other stuff? You know, like get away from the computer and stuff. I'm glad you're here, man. Thanks for being here. We're really doing the quest for the Captain Sanders shirt. Oh, okay. I'm cool with that. I, I don't know what kind of shirt we have on. It's like a brown shirt we got a little while ago. Tactical, I I'm doing the quest for you. That's why I'm doing the quest. Mm. 
bronze tube. Oh man, I would have forgot. Mm -hmm. It's those kinds of details. Like, kids, don't do drugs in college. Don't do any drugs, ever. But if you're gonna do drugs, wait till your frontal lobe is fully developed. That happens around the age of 23 for men, and, and probably earlier for women, because they're superior to us. Honored, I'm sure. Uh, guys, we got a problem. I feel like the, the tubes are like a chance to have them and maybe they have like a rotating inventory that has to like refill. Ghost, I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you for being here. Yeah, you, you guys see it. <clears throat> we, we don't have the option here. It's, and it's engineering, right? It's not. It's not at the blacksmither, blacksmithing vendor. Tubes are random and come in limited supply. That's what I thought because the quest tells you that the that there's a vendor right there in the town. There's like a little gnome who's like an engineering vendor, and it tells you to get it from him. And every time I've tried to get it from him, he's never had it. I will tell you that in the past, the only way I've completed this quest is by buying one on the auction house. So we can keep checking every time we're back in town. But, yeah, maybe we just go, like, maybe we'd fight some harvest golems for a while in Westfall. Jay, what's up, man? Thanks for being here. We are, like, an hour or so into the stream. Haven't died yet. Amir, man, thank you. This is my face. Yeah, I'm stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And if you're here now, you're stuck with it, too. So, there's that. I appreciate you. The engineer supply vendor at Theramore will sell it. Okay. Or whatever the other place is with the boats. <laughs> well, that was uncharacteristically vague of you. We'll find it eventually. It's probably going to be yellow for a long time, you know. Menethil, yeah. Johnny Hoover, we, we think that like in Classic, there's a there's only a limited supply on the vendors, and uh, probably in Wrath he always has it. Probably in Wrath, like the engineering vendors just kind of sell that like unlimited supply. Uh, in, in Classic, we could get it from him too, I think, or maybe that is only in Wrath. But I think it's like any engineering vendor. But even even when I would check the guy in Duskwood, I feel like he would never have the item. Ooh, that's the wrong zone. Yeah, see, it tells us we can get it here, because I think there's a vendor here, and we can check him, but, you know, that's where everyone's going to go right away, and if, if he only sells three of them at a time, they're going to be uh, sold out. Alright, we need to head to the Flight Master, and we'll jump a flight over to Sentinel Hill. You guys saw one on the vendor yesterday? You were probably trying to tell me about it, too, I'm sure. I'm sure I was just being, like, oblivious. It was, was it the engineering vendor that was out in the middle of nowhere when I was trying to get to like the special vendor and I went to the engineering vendor instead? Was that the guy? King's honor, friend. Be careful. Oh, he was right there. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get it from somewhere. You know, and we'll check these places. When we're in those places, we'll definitely have a look and see. And uh, maybe we'll get lucky. Dimitri, hello. Thank you for coming to the stream, man. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a good day.
Banana Joe, hello. Welcome, man. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. But the music has to go back up, yeah. The music is good and the music needs to go back up. Absolutely. How's that? Let me know if that's just way too loud when it kicks back up. Tactical, no problem, man. It's going to keep us alive, so... I'm always happy to do something to keep us alive. You know, for a cool shirt, that could be cool. And then, you know, we get a bag that might have a cool little graphic to it, so... Yeah, Alex, we'll, we'll pop Might when we're in combat. So what I've done with Might is, like, since I have such bad uptime, trying to keep a five-minute buff up all the time, I've decided to kind of treat it like a combat buff, similar to Battle Shout. <clears throat> so when we get into combat, I'm going to be trying to hit it like every other fight just to keep it up. I've, I've decided that for me, a five-minute buff is not something I want to try to keep up all the time. Uh, for me, like a ten-minute buff, 15, 30... You guys, you guys see that I struggle even keeping the buff food up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna treat uh, blessing of might like a battle ability that we pop in combat. It's only 45 mana, so it's not gonna hinder us too much in that regard. But yeah, even to your point though, I do need to still think about it even once we go into combat because I could I could easily forget still. So I appreciate the reminder. Volume is good on the uh, on the sound. Oh, Joel, right on, man, but, but what you might not have seen is, like, I did turn the volume of the music way down when we were in Stormwind. So, yeah, I cranked it way down. I kind of got that you meant, like, it was good music. But, yeah, in Stormwind, I, I turned it way down, way more down than I wanted. So, it was a good reminder anyway for me to turn it back up. So, I appreciate the inadvertent reminder. Marshall Bland, what's up with you? Thanks for being here. Hope you're doing well. How's Hardcore? Hardcore is amazing. Hardcore is a ton of fun. This Paladin in particular is still alive, so that's really good. And yeah, for me, Hardcore is the most immersive way to play World of Warcraft right now. And uh, it's the only way that I really want to play. I'm, I'm probably addicted to it, you know. The footlocker slowly creaks open. Sand and water seem to be its only contents, but wait. A small crab scurries out with a clue to the treasure in its claws. Well, that's convenient. The clue to the treasure reads, Good work, matey. Oh no, not a phony pirate accent. Now you need to head due east. East up the bluffs, east to the road. Okay, it'll, it'll probably just mark it on the map. There we go. Yeah, man, it's a lot of fun. I think a lot of people say they, they get more into their characters in hardcore than other modes of play, and I definitely feel the same way. If I fight a couple of these uh, Harvest Golems, what are the odds that maybe a Bronze Tube drops? Or do I have to fight, like, the level 15 ones? Marshall, what class would I recommend for Hardcore? If, if you're kind of new to Hardcore, I'd recommend something like a Paladin that has all kinds of get-out-of-jail-free cards. Lay on Hands can restore all of our HP at the cost of whatever mana we have. We have Divine Protection that protects from physical and magic damage completely for 8 seconds while we run away. We have a talent that's going to make us run away faster and move faster in general. And then we have a secondary bubble which protects against only physical damage. Uh, we also have heals which is amazing and, and a stun that you get really early in the leveling process to stun anybody who's trying to heal themselves and stuff like that. So yeah, Paladin is a really powerful class. The Priest also, anything with a heal is like a good place to start. That way you can kind of save yourself if you get into kind of a crappy situation. 
But yeah, Priest, Paladin. Definitely good classes to start with. Squidman, the hardest zone to do in Classic. I don't know, but some of you guys might have a lot of opinions on that. That's a good, kind of like an opinion-based question. What's the hardest zone in Classic Era? Plague Lands. It's gotta be. Uh, it's gotta be the Western Plague Lands. Around around the ruins of Stratholm. I vote. I vote Plague Lands. Western Plague Lands is my least favorite place to ever be. I get so angry. If you want to see me angry and miserable for some reason, maybe that's just what you like. That's fine. Uh, try to find some vids of us doing a. Uh, I think it was SOM, the first SOM on our on our human warrior in the Western Plague Lands. Find any VOD of me doing doing Plague Lands, you'll see me really angry. As angry as I get, which isn't like super angry, but yeah, I don't have a good time. Every time I go there, I regret it. I always like t convince myself to go there, even though I know it's a horrible idea. I'm like, it'll be different this time. You're a bit of a higher level this time. You're a different class. It'll be easier. It never is. You get killed so many times. I, I don't know what we're going to do when we get this character into the 50s or how we're going to play. But we're probably going to be doing a lot of mob grinding on high level non-aggressive enemies. Because all of the later game zones are pretty freaking hard. Silithus. Oh my god, that might be true. I think Silithus might have just like less mob clutter though. The worst thing about Plague Lands is how close all the enemies are together. It's like a BFA zone. In Classic Era. So many mobs. So close. Oh, look at that. There's the copper tube. That was worth it. Oh no, tactical. Is that why the, the quest didn't pop? <laughs> Snap. Metals. The names of metals. Hard, hard to remember the differences. Oh no. Well, it was worth a shot. I got a tube, yeah. The tube, not the tube I needed. It's the tube I deserve, but it's not the tube I needed right now. Yeah. Well, damn. Somebody did. You probably did tell me, and I probably missed it. I know. Oh, that's fine. I got super excited for one brief moment. It would be too easy if we can go somewhere and farm them. Also, it, Questy probably would have marked them, right? If, if they did drop the item, I should realize that Questy would have marked them as an enemy that dropped the right item, right? That should have been my first tip-off that, like, it wasn't gonna happen. Corey, thank you, man, and thank you for being here for the stream. I appreciate you showing up. Jason, me too. I've only ever got them off the auction house, but I think Theramore, Tactical said, uh, Theramore, we can definitely, probably definitely find it. Eventually, we'll find a vendor that has it, no matter what. It just might take a little while. Uh, let's see. Here we go.
We're not gonna run into any like crazy elite murlocs out here, are we? Or anything like vulgar? Have I ever tried rested XP? Dimitri, is that the add-on that tells you step-by-step -step what to do in hardcore? Because man, I went on a rant about that yesterday and I don't want to do that again, brother. Let's say that if that's the add-on that we're talking about, I have not tried it. I'm, I'm not, let's, let's, I'm not a big add-on guy. It, it took me, what, two years of classic WoW before you guys convinced me to try using Questy. We were at the end of our SOM run, like level 55, and I wasn't sure where we should go next, ideally, and finally I used Questy. Um, there's a lot of Murlocs in here. Why am I doing this? That's not where we're going. At least they're all low level. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. Can you mail me stuff? I don't have a P.O. box yet. But if you if you have stuff you'd like to mail me, I could I could get a P.O. box. And, and then check it occasionally. I just don't have one at the moment. You can email me stuff. And that stuff wouldn't be able to be physical stuff. Which would be less chance that, that it would be like something scary <laughs> don't don't p.o box mail me anything anything illegal in the state of michigan Logan, I am in the southeastern part. I'm like in the northernmost part of the southeastern part of Michigan. That, that's kind of the, the best approximation I can give you. I, I think I like merch. Actually, I'll get a P.O. box. That'd be cool. All right, so what do we got here? Let's check this out. Assuming we're, we're gonna take the armor off here. We got a shirt with no sleeves. Okay, okay, right on. And then if we put our armor on though, we're just gonna cover it up. Oh, that's the, that's the other shirt. And doop. There we go, and we got a bag. It is an eight slot bag. We can we can replace one of these bags and just have a slightly different look. Uh, do we want to go down to Moonbrook and do the uh, Legend of Stalvan? Doesn't this spawn some kind of enemy, like a spirit or a specter or something? And yeah, look at that. The bronze tube down there too. I feel like maybe I want to go check this out. Logan, that's awesome, man. Are you playing WoW Retail or are you playing WoW Classic? Either way, it's great. If you're enjoying the game, that's awesome. Alex, put the bag in the bank. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Spawns a scary ghost. Anti, it could be a scary ghost, but is it an elite scary ghost? Because that's kind of the only really important part. Because if you get scared, man, you can just cover your eyes, okay? I just need to know if it's going to kill me. Why does this say there's a bronze tube, like, sitting on the ground right over here for me to pick up? What is that about, guys? What is that about? That's the shirt you wear while fishing. That makes perfect sense. That actually, that actually makes perfect sense. I thought, like, we'd get a tuxedo suit or something to wear that for fishing. But, yeah. 
sleeveless. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be hot out there in the water. It could be in a chest or a box. Yeah, it's like weird that Questy is specifically telling me that this is where I can get this thing. It's I'm gonna try and we're gonna see. I don't know if I quite believe it, but there is definitely a box here. It literally says the bronze tube is gonna be in this box. I'm not sure how I missed this before, except like sheer stupidity, but uh, yeah, here we go. Fatty wants to know if I enjoy hardcore or non-hardcore more. I, I'm enjoying hardcore more right now than any other mode of playing WoW. And, but that's just somebody who, who has played WoW for 20 years. So i played a lot of WoW. And, and hardcore is, is new to me. Within like the past, what, half year? Have we been doing these for four or five months? It feels like it's been longer than that, but I feel like maybe it's only been four or five or six months since our, our first Shaman. Dayon, you think it's a chance for the box to have it? Yeah, that seems more likely. I'm not lucky enough to have it be just a 100% chance to get the quest done. This guy just respawned. How many times are we going to have to kill you, man? And then by the time we kill him, the guy back here is going to respawn. Joe, I, I could play Hardcore Wrath, but, you know, that's not really where the challenge is. Yeah, I would I would play hardcore BC if that existed. I don't think I would I would I would care about hardcore wrath as much. We got a crude scope and we got coarse blasting powder. So yeah, that that didn't uh, didn't and then and then maybe down in Moonbrook, same thing, right? We have a chance to get that get an item out of a chest. It's not a hundred percent. Yeah, Joe, I get it, man. You could. Yeah, you could. It's just it's just not very... It doesn't interest me, you know what I mean? Like, the challenge doesn't really seem the same, and it's not really even about, like, how hard it is to stay alive, because you can definitely get killed in Wrath. It's just, like, it doesn't feel the same, especially when you're not really leveling alongside as many people. Oh, there's nobody here at our level range, but we're not... In, even, in, even out of the level range, there's 16 people here that really don't belong here, but if you're playing Wrath of the Lich King... Even if you're on a populated server and you're you're in Westfall, there's going to be like six people there leveling up with you. So it's just kind of empty to level up in Wrath right now. Even with Joyous Journeys, it was empty. That's kind of why I stopped the Shaman run and kind of fell out of it. Because in Stranglethorn Vale, with Joyous Journeys, there were only five people in my level range. It's like no one is leveling characters. Everybody who like is super stuck into Wrath, they have all the characters they want at this point. And people that aren't stuck into Wrath are, are playing Retail or playing Classic Era. I'm just having a lot more fun here than Wrath right now. But yeah, you could, if you liked Wrath a lot and you liked the Hardcore Challenge, you could definitely, I think you can still just even use the add-on and uh, just do the Hardcore Challenge in Wrath. It's definitely something you could do. There just isn't really like a community for it, I don't think. Like within Wrath, there's not like a, a Hardcore server or anything like that where a bunch of people are also doing it. And for me, part of the joy is like knowing that like everyone here is doing this challenge and that we're all kind of in it together. You see people out in the world and they're in trouble and you can help them and your help actually means that you've saved that character's life and vice versa. We've had people help us uh, with, with 7 HP left about to get fireballed down and somebody's healed us and it's like it creates these really engaging, really memorable and powerful gameplay moments that I don't think can exist in any other mode of play just because of how high the stakes are. You, you have these really engaging and memorable moments with your character, you know? Uh, and it's partially because everyone else is on that same challenge with you. Joe, you're, you're just a wrath of the Lich King Andy, man. <laughs> and I appreciate that about you. It's a great expansion, you know. And we'll probably be back in it one day if it lasts long enough, but just not right now. Tim, the Stalvin ghost isn't an elite, but she curses and sheeps, and it can go wrong. Oh man. Okay, so if she if she if she sheeps me, 
If she sheeps me, will Blessing of Freedom get me out of that? Movement impairing. Yeah, Polymorph is not really... It's, it's movement impairing, but I don't think that's how it's classified. Now, Joe, that's being really picky. You want to see a Drain Eye, but you just don't ever want to see the Drain Eye starting area again. <sighs> Brother, that's not how it works. You know, we, ha we have our level 17 Drain Eye female shaman on Pagel, kind of sitting at like level 17. That I was doing all the fishing with her and the cooking and stuff. Maybe well, maybe one day we pick that character up, but it won't be anytime soon. It won't be any. I can honestly say, and I must honestly say that it won't be anytime soon. Uh, okay, so... Old Foot Locker. I'm not really seeing where the thing is that it says might have the engineering in it. So maybe someone else has already looted it and it's just not here right now. All right, let's let's pop this and we'll we'll, we'll just cross our fingers here. I don't think we even need to fight her, so I'm going to take off. I don't think there's there's any reason to engage if we don't absolutely have to. Yeah, Anti, I'm not doing the blessings unless we're in combat, man. I, I'm treating blessing of might like a like a combat buff similar to battle shout. So when we start fighting at level stuff and green stuff, then I'll, I'll pop it in combat. I'm not gonna try to keep a five minute buff 100% up on myself. That's just gonna be setting myself up for failure. So I've kind of pivoted. And I've decided that since it's a low mana cost and it's only five minutes, that it actually makes more sense to use it as a combat buff, similar to Battle Shout for the Warrior. I hope that makes sense and that it doesn't bother you too much, but yeah, that's how I'm going to have to do it. Kevin says, fleeing like a true paladin. Yeah, absolutely. The Paladin excels at fleeing. We went into a talent that makes us faster at running away, so... I mean, technically it makes us faster all the time, but primarily we, we are interested in running away very rapidly. Anti, not seeing the buff in the top right corner is what keeps you awake at night? Oh, man. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to stress you out, brother. But that buff is not going to be up there unless I'm fighting something. And even then, it's only going to have a 95% uptime. Hey there. Tactical, I, I didn't put my bars in the bank, man. Don't be too disappointed in me. But I didn't. I did the thing again where I said I was going to do the thing, and then in my brain, my brain checked the box that says, Thing is done. You're going to put the bars in the bank? Oh, good, you put the bars in the bank. The thing is done. And I like... It's a, my brain will check... If I say something out loud sometimes that I'm going to do, my brain will check the box that says, That thing is already done. And that's what happened with those bars. That's why they're still hanging out. I didn't do it just to annoy you. I swear. I feel like we should be able to get rid of some more stuff, but I'm just not, I'm not seeing it. Let's learn the recipes that we have. That could be super lines. good. Let's get those out of our inventory. Tim, I, I like, yeah, I like Ozremus and Blood Mist. I, I think that the, the aesthetics there are really cool. And I, I don't like Teldrassil either, Joe. And I, I don't really like, I don't like Darkshore at all, apparently. Yeah, I think Ozremus and Blood Mist have a really cool aesthetic. The, the whole Drain Eye like story arc, how they like crashed, it doesn't really have any oomph. You don't ever really feel like any real pressure. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of like a weird start, but 
Like, artistically, I like it. Marshall, right on, man. You didn't miss anything. Welcome back. Hey, you, you, you can be here when you can be here. And when you can't be here, then you have to be where you have to be. I can't expect anything more. I'm just happy to have you here when you can be here. Okay, so what do we want to do now? We're going to get on a flight point to go somewhere. That's that's a fact. What can I do for you? I mean, I guess for now we we go back over to Darkshire or do we want to go to Lake Lakeshire? Let's go to Lakeshire. Let's do the the pendant quest. See you later. We had that green pendant quest. We should be able to do that now. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep, yep, let's do this. We'll approach from the northern side. I think that'll be a little bit better than coming through this way. We'd have to go through all the orcs to get there. Stormwind Bank. I could I could hop off of the bank. Let's let's see if this will stop me somewhere. I don't know if this is going to stop me at Stormwind or if I had a direct flight. I think I had a direct flight. Yeah. That was that was about 10 seconds too late for me to see, I think. I'll just make sure that the rest of our inventory is as good as it can be to accommodate that. Like, we could probably sell... I could probably sell all of this, to be honest. Well, 301 is not bad. I just haven't been using them. And, and I think I might sell them. We'll for sure sell one stack. A scroll of Protection, we can pop. That'll get that out of the inventory. I, I'm gonna sell these, these healing potions because they're not gonna save us or help us very much at all. We really need to find more of the level 12, and we actually probably have a higher level potion we could get if we had access to a vendor that had one for sale. The map pieces. Yeah, we don't need the map pieces anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, we'll get rid of those. Can I do that now? I can. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, the cooking, that, that needs to go in the bank also. I think we'll be okay. We, we have a decent amount of bag space. Uh, the Keg of Thunder Brew. Yeah, I never did that quest. And it may be under level for us now, actually. So I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pop this just to use it and uh, start start eating through it so that that way it gets out of our inventory. Safe travels. And that's one way to get rid of a scroll. Just use it on a random NPC. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Well, there we go, though. We should have plenty of bag space for this outing. Shouldn't be a problem. The Westfall Chicken Pet. Hmm. I don't know if I'm that bored. I've never been a big pet person. I I've never really cared much about collecting the pets or anything like that.
Tactical, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for hanging out for so long. I hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you next time you can make it to a stream, man. Alright, so what levels are we dealing with over here? Level 21, hey, that's actually perfect. I feel like the ones we tried to fight last time were higher level guys, they were like level 24, 25. So maybe like the different areas matter when it comes to what level they are. Marshall the Westfall Chicken quest is it's a long one. If it was like a badass combat chicken that I could like pop on like a five minute cooldown, I would go after it. Even if it were like like a training dummy type of situation where it had some kind of viability in combat, then I'd be down to get it. But I, I've never really been a pet collector, just for the sake of having a pet follow me around. Sometimes that sucks because I know I'm missing out on like, I'm missing out on literal content because I, I can't get super interested in the pets. I feel like if they all had like some kind of, some kind of combat use, like a, maybe on a big cooldown, something minor even, maybe resistances or, or offered you something for gameplay, I would be definitely like 100% inclined to get some of them. Like if you had pets that could offer you like you summon them out and they give you like an elemental resistance buff for a little while uh, on like some kind of like half hour cooldown or something so like if you're going up against fire elementals you could pull out a pet that you know is going to give you some fire resist. I think that would be really cool. That would be a way to get me interested in pets if they just had a little bit of a uh, of viability in my gameplay. I don't know if that would like totally break things or not, but it would be super fun. A season of pets. They do a season, a new season, and have it be a season of pets, and then give pets all kinds of like ludicrous powers. And then you have to relearn like how to play the game, because you need to go collect all these pets that have these crazy like abilities. Alright, now we're getting back into the level 25 guys, so I kind of want to stay away from that, if we can. Because I, I think their chance to, to drop the item is equally bad as the lower level guys. Yeah, like I want these guys. Oh. 
Austin, thank you, man. And thank you for being here for the stream. I appreciate you. Marshall, two hours for a chicken? That that might be a little bit too much work. <clears throat> By the end of it, I'm probably just going to be hungry for chicken, so... Shimmering Armor of the Owl. Cloth Armor. Shimmering. Oh. Okay, that's actually pretty cool looking for a piece of cloth. Yeah, Tim, two hours in the cooker for a chicken, I'm going to eat. Yeah, that that sounds a lot better to me than a pet that's not going to do anything for me. It could be that I am just getting hungry. That's possible. I feel like pets and pet collecting really took off like in Wrath of the Lich King and after. I feel like that's when they really like started to like hook some people in wanting to collect all the all the pets. Probably around the time they started the battle pet stuff. Anti, we have not done any any dungeons yet, and I, I I'm not going to unless unless some of you guys are here and you want to do dungeons on, on your characters and maybe risk the biscuit with me, then maybe I would. And uh, when we do the official hardcore servers, when those come out in the summer, we're going to put a guild together, and then hopefully some of us can run some stuff together. But for this character, for right now, I think I'm just going to keep him safe, and unless we're going to do a run together, I'm just going to stay out of pugs. Because I, I don't want to get killed by a pug, and I, I don't want to get anybody in a pug killed. If it's you guys, you kind of know like what you're in for, you know how I play. Uh, so... Yeah, but... Probably not on this character, but definitely in the future on the official hardcore servers. Pat, yeah, we, we need a bronze tube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're going to need it for a while. There's a couple vendors that we know about that can sell it. And uh, we're, we're not near any of them right now, so... Marshall, right now everybody does hardcore on Bloodsail Buccaneers, which is a, a U.S. Eastern server. I'm not sure if there's a European or an EU equivalent or anything like that for like other regions, but yeah, right now everybody's on Bloodsail Buccaneers. And then, of course, you, you need to have the uh, the, the hardcore add-on installed when you when you begin your journey. Have this installed first before you uh, create the character. Wreck 021. Oh my god, Bloods of Buccaneers in title? Newbie. I am a newbie. I've been streaming for three days. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for being here. I, I put Blood Cell Buccaneers in title so that people that people know where I'm at. Oh, well, you're saying he didn't see the title? Well, that's not really fair because it's not like the end of the title. Like, you probably don't even see that far ahead unless you look at the whole thing. Ramble's Army, Ramble Raiders. What guild? I don't know. I don't know what guild we're going with. Um, I don't even know if I, I, I need my name in the guild name. <laughs> but but we could do something like that. We could just do the rambling ramblers. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Ramblinians? <laughs> could get confusing. Uh, yeah, I should have known I can't I can't sneak in there like that. Should have known better. Yeah, we, we could try we could try to get the rambling ramblers. If nobody's taking it. 
I, I don't want the title of the guild to infer owner ownership by me. You know what I mean? I, I, it'd be cool to have like the, the channel be part of the guild name. I think Rambling Ramblers is pretty good. Because it doesn't, it doesn't infer like my ownership of a group of people. <laughs> Which sounds weird and it's a weird way to think about it, but... I, I will embrace the cult, but I, I just won't I won't infer ownership over it. It's a liability thing, you know. <laughs> Johnny the Rambling Renegades? It sounds like we're up to no good. But I, I think it, it, it gets... That's a little bit edgier than the Rambling Ramblers. We'll, we'll definitely do something, so... It, it will happen. Catherine, you're on holiday in Malta? Is Malta like a small island somewhere? Malta's a small island, right? I, I, the only thing I know about Malta is I, I read a, a Murakami book, Haruki Murakami. And one of the characters was named Malta. And her sister was named after another one of the islands. But besides those character names, I have no knowledge of that. And you say trying to watch on your iPhone, which implies that you're probably somewhere with, without a lot of connectivity. It sounds like Malta might be more interesting though than this stream, so I, I appreciate you being here though. South of Italy. In my imagination, which is all I have to go on, if I was in Malta, I'd, yeah, I'd probably just be on a beach somewhere maybe. That's kind of what I envision. But I'd probably I'd probably be watching uh, something on my phone too. Um, or I'd be reading a book or something, yeah. And just kind of like enjoying it. Malta is gorgeous and really historic. JC, welcome. Thanks for being here. The journey is still going well. I hope the nap was good. Uh, we're not dead yet. We've had a couple of close calls, but nothing too bad. We got some stuff done in Duskwood. We finished up some loose ends over in Westfall. And now we're working on getting some shadow hide pendants in the safest manner that we can. Martin asked if we've been to the wetlands yet. Uh, yeah, we did. We did a bunch of stuff in the wetlands. We'll, we'll probably have to go back to do some of the higher level stuff. Like, we're probably ready to go back, like, soonish. But we've done a lot of stuff there so far, yeah. Yeah, naps are the best. Absolutely. Curse of weakness. Hmm.
It's 9.25 p.m. That's late for you. I understand that. I get tired super early also. Like, we streamed till like 11, 11.30 last night. And for like the last hour of it, I think I was barely conscious. But I, w I was having a really good time. So I, I hung on with my, with my fingernails to the bare edges of reality. And I hung in there. But yeah, I wanted to be like... My body and brain wanted to be like laying down long before that. So I, I totally get it. JC, how did the camping work out for my wife and son and Goomba? Yeah, it worked out okay. They came home this morning early and, and super tired. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that they're all napping right now. And that they have been napping for most of the stream. So like, they seemed like they had fun and they got through it. But typical tent camping in summer is like, it probably wasn't super comfy. And it was probably like a little too warm. And there probably just wasn't enough of a breeze coming into the tent. If I had imagined, that's what, I, that's what I'd imagine these things. And uh, yeah, so they had a good time, but uh, not lots of sleep. Yeah. Povolos asks, what's my favorite class to level up? I think that that would probably have to be warrior, but I've been having, a, in hardcore, the answer is like a little different, but like in general, historically, probably the warrior. Martin says, don't forget the bugs. Yeah, the bugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you can keep them out of the tent for the most part, but yeah, if you're spending time outside... It's like, you gotta be covered in, like, bug spray, but then, like, I don't want to go to bed in, like, hot rack covered in sweat and bug spray, so it's, like, becomes, like... It becomes challenging to tent camp. Especially if you're not really out of place. Some places, like, you go to a campground, they have, like, a building with some shower facilities and stuff, and, th and that's fine. But other places, you're just kind of, like, out there. And, uh, you don't have access to be able to quickly and easily clean yourself for the evening. And I'm kind of, like, a, a person who doesn't really like to sweat unless I'm exercising or doing work that is, like, intended to make me sweat. I don't like sweating just because it's hot and I'm sitting in it. This is a very dangerous little area that we should probably just get away from and just be happy if we don't run into this roving patrol of three of them. Because uh, that's a character killer right there. We got a caster and two melee, so stun, stun, shadow bolt, shadow bolt, shadow bolt, dead. Chris, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Happy to have you here. Robert Campbell's. <laughs> that that was that was a little bit of a stretch, but I I see what you did. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I would ever want to broadcast my camping experience because. Uh, it, depending on how hot it gets and how miserable it is, it's not going to be a very fun one. It's like, I enjoy the outdoors when I'm like, I'm going on a long hike and I know that at the end of it I get to go home and, and like, change my clothes and get clean. But when I know I'm going to be stuck out in the wilderness, 
I don't really care for that a lot. I'll do it, but it's not really my favorite thing. I'd rather I'd rather be in a cabin or glamp, like in, in something. But apparently, we're gonna be trying the tent camping. For me, sometimes tent camping turns into car camping, where you realize that you are going to be more comfortable in your car than you are in the tent. <laughs> and so a lot of times in my life, tent camping has become car camping. And then I just kind of feel stupid because I spend like five hours trying to fall asleep. And then I go to the car and I'm like, why didn't I go to the car five hours ago? It's because you were, you were trying to adhere to the spirit of camping, but it just made you miserable. Do Americans do summer cottages? They're super popular here. I'm sure like rich people do that. Yeah. I'm sure there are plenty of people who own like a summer cottage. They, they probably In Michigan, like people like to go up north where it's a little bit cooler in the summer. So a lot of people, if you have the money, you'll, you'll like own a place or have something up north you can kind of retreat to when it gets like super hot. But that costs the moolah. Yeah, so. I don't have that option right now. But they're probably definitely popular among people who can afford them. We would call it a cabin, though. Here, if you, if you have a place up north that you kind of retreat to uh, in the summer for vacations, you'd call it, I'm going up to the cabin, is what we'd refer to it as. And a cabin could be like a five-bedroom log mansion. <laughs> but if it's up north and there's some wood grains to it, you call it the cabin. And that could indicate any size of dwelling. Yeah, JC, that's a good memory. We, we used to go tent camping when I was more like when I was a teenager. We, we, we went to a lot of tent camping in my teenage years. When I was a little, little kid, we didn't do that kind of stuff. But we did more of that as I got older, and I've always felt the same kind of way about it. I was probably more tolerant of it when I was young, when I was a kid. But I still remember even back then certain aspects of it really bothering me. Exactly, Steve. They're they're available, but they're not cheap. Yeah. Tent AC units. Yeah, we have the we have inflatable mattresses for the tents, so like it's not super like physically uncomfortable on the ground. But yeah, the the heat and just the stagnation. Like, we have a, a battery pack fan that that could probably help a little bit. I think like for me, like the way that I would enjoy tent camping the most is like on a backpacking journey. Like like if you're moving and you have a destination in mind, you know you're going to complete like these 10 miles or 20 miles and you're going to do it over the course of a day or multiple days and you're, you're going to stop along the way. I think for me, like that would be that would be more enjoyable because then it's like there's a journey happening and like the camping and the tent camping is, is a part of it that you need to do to get get through the journey. But when it comes to just finding a place of land and just like pitching a tent, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But uh, I, I think like the backpacking journey would be more interesting to me. Yeah, Dan, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I'd love to have some place with like a cabin and a lake. Ah, uh, there's that patrol again. Let's let's back off. Oh, we're done. We're done. What is this? this is a copper vein and we are done with this pendant quest. Let's actually just get out of here. We're not going after this guy. That's an elite quest. I, I shouldn't even have that in my log. Let, let's go ahead and just drop it. Uh, what else? So Blackrock Bounty is level 25. How We can try uh, Yowler, maybe. We could try Belly Grub. We could try Belly Grub for sure. Dorsey, you said if you're hot in the tent, just sleep in the sleeping bag outside and get devoured by every bug, man. You can't do that. I mean, you could do that in like a scenario where you have like, you could do like a net around yourself probably or something, but yeah. No, man. Because I'm on an air mattress, so that sucker needs to be in the tent anyway. But yeah, like you go outside, sure. It's just, there's a degree that the air reaches when it's so hot that even being outside is not going to cool you off necessarily. 
and that temperature is around like 80 to 85 degrees for me. Society of Sin, thank you. I appreciate that, and thank you for being here. I appreciate you coming and joining the stream, hanging out. Do hardcore runners usually do the Keyshawn quest? Probably not. I don't think we're going to do it. Cory hammock sleeping? Yeah, we had a hammock that was going to be good for that. We just have never tried it that way. Dorsey, the trees help a lot? I mean, yeah, they do. They help They help attract bugs, too. JC, that's awesome. It's cooler here today, too. It finally cooled off a little bit, so the high isn't going to be like 89 degrees today. It's, it's going to be like 79 or 80, which is, which is kind of okay. Uh, I'm kind of okay with that. It still feels a little hot out there in the sun when I, when I took the doggo out earlier, but... Uh, it feels better than, than the previous days have been for the last week or so. So I'm, I'm super happy for like, a return of actual normal temperatures is good. Marshall asked if I would do repeatable quest if the item or XP was good. Yeah. If I was, if I got XP, if it was like a daily quest, you mean? I don't know if I'd repeat the same quest over and over and over and over and over in a row, but if it was like a daily quest area that gave good XP uh, while leveling up, yeah, probably. Need help? Uh, I don't think we can do this one either. Gaz Ilgoth. For the Alliance. Who has the Belly Grub quest? Or do we already have it? Unwelcome guest. We already have it. Oh, Zara, thank you for being here. Yeah, we put the face cam on. I've been stuck with this face my whole life, and now if you're here in the stream, you're stuck with it too for as long as you're here in the stream. So I, I appreciate you tolerating it and being here. This guy's kind of beating the crap out of us still. We, we've got a friend here, and if not for this friend, we might be in big trouble. We might have to run away. Uh, but we got we got a buddy mage here wanding for us, so that's uh, that's super helpful. I got super lucky that they helped me out instead of letting me uh, get killed potentially. <laughs> I got I got super lucky. We probably could have healed up and ran away, but I don't think we were going to easily win that fight. JC, more coffee? Yeah, I, I might uh, I might take a little break here in a bit. I, I'd like to go a little bit longer, but I may need to step away for a few minutes here and uh, get some coffee, get something to eat, and take care of some things. Might take like a five to seven minute break shortly. Actually, that, that sounds like a good idea to do now. Yeah, I think I will go for a bit longer today, guys. But I, I'm going to take a little break. We'll turn this quest in. I will park us at the inn where it's relatively safe. I will dance in the common room of the inn. And I'm going to step away for five to seven minutes. MJ, you like how the streams are getting longer and longer? We did a really long one yesterday because I had some extra time, and we did a night one yesterday because I had extra time. So usually I aim for three hours. Um, if I'm unless I'm doing like many many streams a day, to, this one might go a little bit longer than three. Need something? See you around.
Dorsey, yeah, definitely. If you don't like nature, don't go there. I see. I like nature, but I hate bugs. So, for, like, for me, the best time to enjoy nature is, like, autumn and early spring and a little bit at the beginning of winter. I, I think it's about, like, if you don't like bugs, you just have to know, like, when you can go outside and when you can't. And, yeah, ultimately, that's because you can, you can enjoy outside without bugs. It's just the time of year thing. Anyway, guys, I will be right back. Let's go ahead and dance. And if you guys gotta go, you don't want to hang out and stare at an empty chair for seven minutes, I totally understand that. I would never hold it against you, and I just appreciate you being here. So yeah, I will be back in a little bit. Five to seven.
Thank you guys for being patient. According to be fair, there, there was never a curtain, but yeah, this is my face. This is the one I'm stuck with, and if you're here in the stream, it is the one that you are stuck with, so... Yeah. All right, so what do we do now? Blackrock champions? Mm -mm. We could go after the ghoul things for totem of infliction. Tim, you say you could put a, a post-it note over me. You de you definitely could. <laughs> That's absolutely true. And maybe advisable in some situations. Uh, am I about post-it note size? Uh, on like, well, on some devices, I guess I would be. <laughs> That's, That's a good method, though. I, I've never thought about that before. I like it. All right, let's fly down to uh, Duskwood. We have a couple of quests to turn in, and then I think we can do some more farming down there. Hello. Be careful. Ryan asks if this is the first time I've had my face on stream. No, for the last couple days. We, we started a little bit the day before yesterday, and then yesterday I, I had it on the whole time. It, it just seems, people seem to enjoy it for some reason. I, I don't know why. I try to look at myself as little as I can, so... You know, I kind of thought it would be a distraction from the content, but I feel like it, it just kind of fits... Kind of fits the stream. You know, there might be times when I when I turn it off, like if, if I if I want to sit here and munch on some like protein bars or something, then I'll probably turn it off. If I just feel like I'm looking really miserable on a certain day, or I just like don't groom myself at all for weeks, then I, I might turn it off. But yeah, here we are. Thanks for being here. Tim, you did cover up a streamer's face once. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think at that point I, I probably just had to find somebody else to watch. That's probably true, Jason. Like as humans, you, you kinda like you need a face for a voice, and what you do is like you you create a face. Yeah, I remember creating a face when I, when I started watching Christopher Odd, and he, he didn't have a face cam in any of his, like, pre-recorded uh, stuff either. And I remember, like, it, making up what, what Christopher Odd looked like, and then I found out what he actually looked like, and obviously, like, totally different than I would have thought. So, yeah, we, we need to have a face, and we will construct one out of pure speculation if we have to. Have a good one. Yeah, then the camera on it is it's a lot more personal. You guys get to see my grill, and I don't get to see any of yours. <laughs> it's very personal, but it's like, it's very one-sided. And for a long time, that was kind of like the thing I had against it. 
uh, because I was used to teaching in a classroom and like in a classroom like you're on display so it's uncomfortable but you can see everybody else so in a way you know they're on display for you too so it kind of evens out but on a stream you know you're on display and nobody else is and so I, I kind of had to ponder that for a while and become okay with it basically What can I do for you? Live stream you, watching you live stream me? Is that like live stream inception? Light bless you. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm fine having it on. Now that I've had it on, it seems weird to just turn it off. Unless, like I said, you know, there may be times when I turn it off for like very specific reasons. Dan, no, I don't stream on, on Twitch, thankfully. Thank God. I've done a few streams on Twitch way in the past. I played some Dauntless on, on Twitch. I played Outer Worlds. No, Outer Wilds. Not Outer Worlds. Outer Wilds. I played that on Twitch. Uh, no, I, and I never thought about revisiting it, especially after playing WoW on YouTube. I, I always knew that if I was going to stream, it was going to be on YouTube, because that's where you guys would know me from. And building up your following on Twitch, especially these days, and getting to a point where it's, like, worth it, it just takes it takes a lot of grinding. Kings they literally want you to just grind, like, just be on stream, like, nonstop as much as you can to grind your stats up. And I'm not really into that, so it just made more sense just to be here. I have no plans to ever be on Twitch. Go with honor, friend. I'm going to leave that to the people who are already there. There are already enough people on Twitch. And they don't need me there. Ryan, you thought I would be a lot bigger with that deep voice? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm pretty... I'm not like an enormous guy, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm six foot four, 200 pounds of, of just solid muscle. So, I've been a little bit bigger. The, the heaviest I ever got was, was probably 220. And you probably would have seen that more in my, in my shoulders and upper body then, but... I, I'm lighter now, my legs are bigger now. I can't be any bigger, man. I'm 40. <laughs> I'm probably never going to weigh 220 again. I started off as a 150-pound, as 4-foot-tall, skinny 21-year-old about uh, 18 years ago. It's been quite a journey. I don't run into many people as big as me, so... Corey, you say you never would have caught a stream if it was on Twitch. Yeah, I think a lot of people are like that because I know a lot of you guys like to even watch on your televisions I like to watch YouTube on my television as well and there's no TV app for Twitch at all so like that kind of like just precludes an entire avenue of watching and uh yeah that's bad I don't think any, I would have to like really broadcast to you guys super hard and be super pushy if I wanted to get you guys onto Twitch to watch me and that would be horrible it's much more natural just to be here Yeah, Dan, it's only because I've been weightlifting for 18 years. It's like, these days, it's not even, like, I don't even put a lot of effort into it. I do, like, half-hour workouts, like, four or five days a week. But it's just, like, after 18 years, it just compounds. As long as I eat enough, you know, I don't, I don't lose muscle mass. But if I stop eating or I don't eat enough, I'll lose, like, five or six pounds in a week. It's not quite red, <laughs> but yes, I did decide to fight it. I thought I thought that would help. I thought exorcism would help, and it really it's missed. So I think we're gonna be fine. Do we pop a mana potion here, or do we pop a health potion? What's what's going to be more useful to us, I wonder? 
There we go. All right, we shouldn't be up here. Yeah, we, we don't need... Uh, for some reason... Yeah, level 25 quest, but the ghouls here are level 30. That's just... That's just gross. That is gross and rude. Why are they level 30? Is Twitch not just... I, I don't even know what that word means, so I don't even want to repeat it, because I'm, I'm an old person. Uh, I don't know. I think Twitch is okay for some for some people. It's okay. Are there are good streamers on Twitch, like Ko is on Twitch, Asmin's on Twitch. I, I think Twitch has its problems, but uh, I think there are some really great people on Twitch. And it's like, you know, they're on Twitch because they started on Twitch, and w once you build something, you, you don't just leave the platform to, like, start over somewhere else. Yeichen, you want to know if I'll continue the Wrath of the Lich King Let's Play? What I'm going to do for Wrath is, uh, since what I'm interested in most is seeing the Horde story quest in Northrend, I'm going to play our, our Tauren Warrior, who's in Northrend, parked at, like, level 71, and continue his journey. And I'm going to do that as recorded videos with no face cam, so it's like the same immersive feel as it has been there. And we're going to read the uh, all the quests for the Horde side in Northrend. And then once he's at max level, we'll do some max level stuff, but I'm not going to level any low level characters in Wrath right now. I don't, I don't have any plans for any low level character leveling. Ryan, the ad spam uh, on Twitch is bad. I feel like some of the ad spam might be controlled by the specific creator, though, because don't they have tools to, like, remove ads or limit the ads? Or, the, or do they have tools to, like, place where the ad block goes? Half-naked girls pretending to play games. Well... Yeah, well the thing is, like, somebody likes that though. You know what I mean? Like, you say that, like, it's like, that's not okay or desirable, but like, there are people out there who want to watch that content, I guess. And there are creators who want to create that content. I can't really, like, I can't judge people for stuff like that. I can't, I can't yuck somebody else's yum as long as it's like a legal thing and it's, it's consensual. I, I can't really yuck somebody else's yum, if that makes sense. Like, something that somebody else likes, I can't say, well, this thing is bad because I don't like it. Because I'm not going to watch that, you know, I'm not going to spend my time on it. But, you know, somebody might want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, <laughs> if it's the money thing, you can't let that kind of stuff bother you, brother. Because, like, yeah, are they making money off that? Yes, absolutely they are. And it's like, the good thing about it is, like... Not to get into it too much, but it's a relatively safe way for them to make money. And that's really that's really all I can say. And it's probably something they enjoy, because I don't think you would do anything like that, especially doing something every day. It's hard to think that like someone could do something every day that they don't love and do it for long when it comes to something like that. So I can't really get down on it or, or say that there's anything wrong with it. So I don't think that there really is. I hope that makes sense. JC, I stole that from Co-Carnage, yeah. Mm hmm To be completely fair, so you can definitely steal it from me. It just, it sums it up perfectly, you know. If somebody else likes something, you don't like it. You cannot like it, but you, you, sh you don't really need to be vocal about the fact that you don't like it. Because, like, somebody else does like it. Which is fine, like, everybody, listen guys, everybody can be into what they want, you know. There's lots of ways of entertainment out there in the world. Some of them have been around for a long time, some of them are new. 
and and people can like what they want as long as it's like it's not no, it's not hurting anybody and it's all like consensual agreed to what's what's going on and what people are getting out of it and that's absolutely fine Dan, exactly, guys. T to each their own, kind of, when it comes to that kind of thing. If a platform is full of content that you don't like, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't help to disparage the platform or the content that you don't like. You just, you just avoid the content you don't like, you know? Because judging that content or, like, disparaging it, it's not going to make it go away. You just have to accept it. It's part of the world. There's so many things that are part of the world. You know, some of them you'd say, I wish that wasn't part of the world, but it is. You just have to kind of be accepting of it. Right. Check for the tube. Yeah, absolutely. Where is this little gnome? Did he have the tube? I didn't see it. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay, next page. Bra oh, copper tube, that's not what we need, right? We need the bronze tube. We got a bronze framework. And a copper tube. The copper tube's not what we need, right? Yeah, that's not it. It's bronze tube. Hmm. Possibly somebody bought him out. Ryan Cage asked, did I ever try Turtle while private server? I can't. Because I, I can't stream on a private server because technically private servers are not supposed to exist. They're against the Blizzard Terms of Service. So I can't stream or, or do recordings on a on a private server, so I've never tried one. Because I, I'd hate to be in a position where I like try it and I love it, and I can't stream it or record it. I supply only the finest. Yeah, goods. Blizzard Blizzard doesn't want private servers to be a thing really. They want people to pay them to play their game, it turns out, which is just kinda how capitalism works. Be careful. But yeah, it's not for lack of interest. I just can't stream it or record it and I, I don't want to end up liking something that I that I can't like legally play. Guys, can can you do me a favor and we just kind of let it go and move past it? <laughs> we have we have different opinions and that's totally obvious and it's also okay. It's also completely okay to disagree. And the thing that you, people make the mistake of is they think we have a disagreement. We must verbally resolve this and come to a conclusion. No, you don't. You you guys don't have to reach some kind of like verbal agreement with each other. It's not necessary. You can just keep on keeping on. I, I would prefer that very much. Just being like accepting, it's okay to kind of like show your point, like my point is this, my point is that. But what you can't do is like expect the other person who doesn't share your opinion to secede to your opinion. No no one should have to feel like they have to secede to somebody else's opinion when it comes to stuff like this. And it's really not worth getting too worked up about in my opinion. We're all different and we're always going to feel differently about a vast array of issues. And like part of interacting with like a bigger community or even a small community like this one is you just have to be like accepting and you have to know that even when someone is into something that you you don't like or can't stand that you just have to accept it and that like trying to argue a point against it or defend your own position is, is kind of pointless you don't have to defend yourself you just have to be you're allowed to be but it's like like i said don't yuck someone else's yum don't expect to try to convince people to always agree with you because it's it's usually not going to happen and people give themselves a lot of grief feeling like they have to convince somebody of their opinion or, de or defend something. Yeah, just watch me kill zombies and drink some beers and just chill. Exactly, Dan. Yeah. Working in the woods. Working in the woods feels like maybe I don't want to do this either. Level 28. I'm probably going to run into level 28 enemies over here. Yeah, I don't want to be here either. 
having a really hard time today finding places we can spend a lot of time and not feel like we're fighting stuff that's like too high a level. Maybe it's time to like, yeah, maybe next time we're back in wetlands, right? Yeah, I think next stream we have stuff in wetlands to do. But I, I would like to do some stuff here. Hmm. We could head back over to the cemetery and just kind of be careful. James, I, I dropped the quest in Ashenvale. They were getting to be low level and I, I didn't think we were going to go back there. So I dropped the few that we had. For Ryan Cage, is Chad getting worked up about an opinion? Shocking. Uh, well, not like super, like low key worked up. It's just like, you know, people are different. We just have to accept it. It's okay to be different. If we weren't different, we'd all be, you know, drones. It'd be horrible. It'd be a horrible life if everybody was always forced to agree or concede. Sven's Revenge. Maybe we can get behind this barn and we can... There's like a little pile of dirt we have to dig into, I think. I don't remember what level enemies are back here, but it's a level 25 quest, so maybe we can do it. Uh, okay, yeah, I think it's possible, but maybe we come around the back. Okay, you're in stealth. That's very clever of you. Yeah, it's clever to have people hiding out in the fields in stealth. Ah, uh, that's shite. Let's back you up. Not into that warg. And then maybe we can leash the one Ravager. As we back up. Unless she runs. If she runs, yeah, she ran. So that's not great. Let's finish her off. I want to leash this. I, I Yeah, I have to leash it. Let's do this, and we'll run for the hills. Well, literally, in this case, we'll run for the hills. Um, couple of stealth guys, so stealth guys are going to get us killed, absolutely. I don't want to pop this potion. Don't make me do it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're not... We're not going down here right now, I don't think. Unless we can do it, like, super slowly. Now that I know there are stealth guys, maybe I can approach super slowly and not have that same thing happen again. Also, taking the wolves out would have been really smart. I think I was just playing with my camera way too close for too long. That's kind of what happened. We'll do a little bit of perception here, maybe that'll help us. I see you coming in there, I see you. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to be super careful if we're gonna navigate this place. J. Tom, good afternoon, man. I'm doing well. I think Chad's doing well. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Ryan Cage, you're probably talking about the Shure SM7B uh, that I got right as Wrath of the Lich King was basically launching. I thought it was a good idea to try to, to learn how to use the Shure SM7B. 
And uh, if I were streaming, it probably would have been a really okay idea to do that. The Shure SM7B is a totally different kind of mic than a USB mic. And because of that, the way that it captures audio is very different. And I had a hell of a time getting my recording software to pick up uh, not just mono audio, where it's only going into the left ear, and to actually pick up stereo audio. And eventually I went through a lot of troubleshooting. I tried using like OBS to record instead and doing lots of different stuff. But for the type of content I was doing at the time, for doing the pre-recorded stuff, the Shure SM7B was not the way to go. And I, so I used it for a bit, and I have a handful of videos where I, I did use it. And then I just got a better Yeti mic and went back to the Yeti. And the sound differences between the two, even when I got the Shure SM7B working, the sound differences were not very, very large for me. Uh, so I haven't went back to the Shure yet. You know, if I keep streaming, and I'm streaming a lot, and that's primarily what we do, then I, I would look at uh, checking out the Shure SM7B again. But for right now, I, I really like the Yeti X. We're gonna have to try to get this 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 enchanter to follow us out into the field. This is gonna be iffy. Let, let's do this. That's a fireball. Yeah, this was already just an idea that's probably not gonna work, is it? Uh, can we can we range this fireball? We can. Ah, he leashed. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think we can deal with this guy. Level 26 fireball guy. Level 26 fireball guy is uh, is how we're going to get killed, I think. Yeah, right. I, I had all kinds of issues with it, and then, like, I, I could never really get it working the way I wanted with my setup and how I wanted to record my videos. I am going to run down to Stranglethorn and just grab the flight point at the uh, base there, and then I think we're going to fly on out of here. I don't think I want to be here right now. I, I think I'm going to have to eventually find a place where we can grind on like some level 23, 24 non-aggressive enemies. And maybe do that for the rest of level 26. Because we are just like continuously getting into trouble trying to push forward these quests and I don't feel like that's the way we should go. Wait a minute, is there a flight point down here in Classic Era? Or is there not? There's not a flight point here in Classic Era, is there? There is a, a Skull Elite Tauren enemy. Okay. Alright. Perfect. Let's just do this instead. Deepwater Tavern. Deepwater Tavern is in Wetlands. Wetlands sounds good. Dorsey, I see. Don't go to Stranglethorn. Yeah, I, I thought that there was a flight point there, but I'm probably thinking about BC and Wrath at the uh, at the Rebel base. The Rebel camp. I thought it'd be an easy way just to, to, to hop a flight somewhere, but no. No, it was not a good idea. We didn't die, at least. Rebel camp got added in BC. Awesome. I, I have pizza that's been brought to me, so Cam is going off, and I'm going to try to eat a little bit while I'm in route here.
or I, I know somewhere <clears throat> we have a trail that leads us back to like a dig site. I just am having trouble remembering how in the heck we get into that area. Huh, maybe a little bit farther back this way. All right, here we go. Let's go check out what these quests are about. I think we kill raptors for one of these quests. It's a raptor kill quest. And then we have to find some tablets back here that are also surrounded by raptors. That being said, I see a lot of dead raptors right now, so we have to also be careful about respawns. Fall damage, could we fall from here and die, do you think? Like if I if I slid off this we'd probably be dead. Okay, good to know. How are you? Omar's revenge, ten modeled screechers, ten modeled raptors. Yeah, good. What's on your mind? Four missing tablets, Eidos, Motor, Golm, and Nehru. Be good. Hello. And then this is the breadcrumb. Return to Terrell Rockweaver with Marin's note. Okay. Safe travels. Perfect. Alright guys, I think the plan is going to be, we're going we're gonna to do the raptor quest here. I am going to do this raptor quest, and then after that, I think I'm going to have to go for the afternoon. I'm not 100% yet on whether I'll be back on this evening. It's going to depend on how the family feels, and if they want to do anything after dinner, and like hang out, or if they're still feeling like super sleepy. Uh, but I, I, if I come back on later, it'll probably be for a D4 stream, because I kind of want to step back into d4 a little bit but yeah we're, let's do the raptor quest and uh that'll be a good way to cap things off today i think these guys are green so <clears throat> we, we shouldn't have a lot of problems with them james thanks for stopping by man yeah we're, i'm having a great stream it's been a really great time today uh we've been on since i think 12:45. Gonna go for a little bit more and possibly come back later this evening for some D4. Hope you're doing well. Whitney, hello. Thank you for stopping by. Being here now. I appreciate it. We're, we're gonna go for a little bit longer this afternoon, but we've, we've been on since like 12.45 or so. So I'm gonna hop off here after this quest, but I'm gonna be, be back later in the evening for D4, I think, maybe, possibly. I want to be back later, but I can't really commit, so.
Jonique, uh, the, the VODs, I, I'm gonna put the VODs into a playlist, so I have episodes 1 and 2, the, the VODs from my stream of those on the channel. I'm not gonna do a recorded series for D4, if that's what you're asking. If, when I play D4, I'm just gonna stream it. So episodes 1 and 2 are up on the channel, they're not in a playlist right now, I need to actually fix that. And then, uh, I, as the VODs, as we stream, when the, the VODs go live right after the stream, so the, the, the VODs of the stream will always live on the channel. Dorsey, take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. I have never seen so many raptors converge on us all at once. Very clever. Okay, yeah, every quest I seem to think, hey, this is going to be pretty easy. It turns out that uh, it's not. It hasn't been easy. We are definitely going to have to think about where do we want to grind on non-aggressive mobs for at least the rest of level 26. And we just need to find somewhere a little bit safer because I, they must have called out to each other. or They're called screechers, so I'm assuming that they screech. I was trying to pull him back and I, I thought I had done a pretty good job of pulling him back. But that didn't seem to matter. Let's see if we can get him all the way back here. Look, this other player had aggro on this one, and it ran to us. They had pulled one, and then the other added. But then something happened to where that mob, instead of continuing to attack that player, decided he would rather come and attack us. That was scary and a little bit weird. Yeah, I, I don't want to die here as I'm thinking about like wrapping up the stream. That would be pretty depressing. So I, I might not push to complete this. I, I might not push to complete this because I thought this was going to be mainly green enemies and the Screechers are not green and on top of that the Screechers are actually really really dangerous. So yeah. Hmm. Oh what a bind we're kind of in. We could take the letter back. Oh man maybe not going into Stone Talon was like a really huge mistake. Maybe we really really needed to go into Stone Talon.
It's just that there doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of stuff to do. Do we have to go back to Ashenvale for a little bit? Do the Pride Wings? Do the uh, Guard? Ruzel? Could do that one. I think we're going to have to take ourselves back over to Ashenvale and at least try to do some of that lower level stuff to see if we can if we can get level 27. I mean, we're not going to get level 28, but maybe if we can get level 27, some of this stuff in Duskwood might be a little easier. The Rot Blossoms, we need to be able to take on the stuff in the cemetery. Once we can fight the stuff in the cemetery, we, we can do a few things at the, at the same time. But yeah, until we're strong enough to do that, we might have to go to Ashenvale. Guys, it's been a real blast. I, I think at this point I'm probably going to park it at the inn and I'm going to take a break. It's been a really delightful day. I really appreciate you guys hanging out here. Great to meet you. And hey, we're still alive. We escaped many, many close calls. Off with you. And we're making progress. You know, we're getting pretty close to being the highest level that we've ever been in hardcore and that's super exciting. I owe that mostly to you guys. Your information and insight has saved me probably a couple of deaths and a lot of pain. But yeah, I think I'm going to get off here. I think uh, dinner's coming up soon and I want to get a quick workout in and then I might come back on later this evening, maybe between 7 and 8 sometime, to play a little bit of D4. And yeah, I think Ashenvale next. I think we go back to Ashenvale and we, we clean up some of the quests there. We, we take a step into the Stone Talon Mountains and we see if there's just any lower level stuff we can still do there and we just get as much XP as we can before we go back into Duskwood. Hi. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Safe travels. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we'll see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.